And welcome into War Memorial Stadium here in Little Rock for the Class 2A State Championship, the 2022 edition. I'm Joey McWilliams along with Wes Moore and Tyler Cass here in War Memorial Stadium, the championship between the Carlisle Bison and the Hazen Hornets. Should be a good afternoon of football today. Two teams that come out west with two radically different styles on offense, but they get the job done. Yeah, Hazen's going to throw the ball around a little bit. They're more of a, a dynamic offense. For Carlisle, they're going to run it, and you're going to hear the name Jason Sullivan a lot for Carlisle. He's rushed for over 2,700 yards and 44 touchdowns this season. He's one off from a state record for rushing touchdowns in the season. Carlisle Carlisle 11 and 1 on the season. Hazen is 12 and 0. The one loss for Carlisle, Carlisle came against Hazen. These are conference foes, only 10 miles apart. And way back, and I say way back with tongue in cheek, early November, week 10, last week of the regular season, these two teams met. And it was a 38 to 30 game, a one score game with Hazen coming up on top. And for most of the year, Hazen and Carlisle have been number one and number two in 2A. So you have. Well, what turns out to be the two best teams playing for a state championship. And you look down at the stands, I think all of Hazen and all of Carlisle are here to play this 2A state title game. Yeah, somebody needs to turn the light off in the towns uh, before they leave to come over here. Making the trip west to Little Rock, these two teams from 2A4. It's the Highway 70 Smackdown. And Wes, you remember we talked about the, the dominance that, that they've had in Class 2A, specifically in their conference as well, but they're no strangers to one another. And then what does that mean when we see on the field today because they know what they're going to get? Well, a lot of times when a team plays another team for a second, time you make adjustments and especially the team that loses they make adjustments because uh, you figure the team that won the first game they're not going to make any adjustments because well what they did work the first time well these teams know each other so well they play each other every single week uh, one of the head coaches told us this week that they could have played this game on Monday because they know each other so well they know Carlisle knows what Hazen's going to do and Hazen knows what Carlisle is going to do today it's all about who can execute, who takes care of the football, and who scores in the red zone. And that's going to decide this game. It's going to be a lot of fun. and can't wait to get this thing started. We'll start in about five and a half minutes. We'll take a break. We'll come back, and we'll go down to the field, find out about some of the conditions here at War Memorial Stadium. Stick around. You're watching the 2A State Championship game on Arkansas PBS Sports. Sports is, is so important to this state and the fabric of the state. And I appreciate Arkansas PBS doing all the state title games. And that makes it available for not just the fans in central Arkansas, or south Arkansas, but fans around the entire state. I can only think of the kids in small towns, and this is the biggest moment maybe in their sports careers. And they have that keepsake of having that game on TV to have with them the rest of their lives. People would come from miles around to come to 9th Street just to see what it was like. I'm saying this was the mecca of entertainment in the South. I want to blow the roof off of the South. Oh, yeah. We thought we was on top of the world. Man. Download the PBS video app or watch online. Here we go. That way the flavors will marry nicely. Can you tell me what I'm looking at? I'm not looking for love, I'm looking for cookies. And there's still places to discover. It just absorbs you. You can make this at home if you can't find it. I will continue to eat and drink until you get here. Get here fast. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, look at that. Bill, oh, look at that look good. We are going to be eating well. It does work. It does. we got a happy little sky. We're just getting started. Back at War Memorial Stadium, we are getting set for the two-way state championship game between Carlisle and Hazen. Let's take a look at some of the players you need to know for this game, and it starts with uh, Carlisle, and we mentioned him off the top a few minutes ago, Jason Sullivan, the running back for Carlisle. He's going to carry the ball a lot today. No doubt about that. He's averaged 20 carries per contest and a little bit more than 227 yards per game, 2,727 yards for the season. What a fantastic uh, player he is. 
is. He's actually now the state record holder as he just passed uh, teammates from Carlisle, actually uh, an alum from Carlisle, 44 rushing touchdowns on the year past Anderson, and he uh, is leading the way for the state and uh, his class. Here's a look at Hazen's Braylon Anderson. He is our impact player. He's rushed for 1,500 yards, 1,520 to be exact, 21 touchdowns, 285 yards receiving, six more touchdowns. So 27 touchdowns on the season for Braylon Anderson. Luke King's a heck of a quarterback, and he's going to make sure Braylon Anderson gets many touches today in this game. I, you know, we talk about that, and it's 71 touchdowns between the two of them. It should be a, a big offensive day. Look down to Tyler Cass, who's on the sideline right now right now and, and tell us uh, what it looks like as these two teams are going out for the coin toss. Yeah, guys, I can't imagine a lonelier stretch of highway in Arkansas right now than that 10 miles of Highway 70 that separate Hazen and Carlisle because no one's there. They're all here. This is one of the best crowds for a two-way state title game I've ever seen. I know both school districts shut down today so all the students could be here. And Carlisle actually put out, I don't know if you guys can see that, a little notice if you uh, are an employee somewhere in Carlisle. They say that'll get you out of work today so you can be here. <laughs> or at very least, it also specifies if you don't let your employees come to War Memorial, they're going to be sitting on their phone watching this Arkansas PBS broadcast. I was at the game a month ago in Carlisle where they battled for a 2A4 championship. That was one of the best atmospheres in the year. The only thing that could top it, going for another trophy. Like you guys mentioned, Hazen won that Highway 70 SmackDown trophy earlier this year, but this is the trophy that both teams really want. And you mentioned Luke King. In that first game, he wasn't able to play in the first half. Carlisle actually took a halftime lead, and then when Luke came back in the second half, Hazen was able to win that ball game. Now the Hornets will have their guy from the get-go. I look for that to make a big difference today, almost a big difference as the fans on either sidelines. We don't have just the students here. We've got the whole towns, and it's going to be a fun one. Now let's go back up to you guys for kickoff. A little indication of what Hazen's thinking. They won the toss. They want the ball. A lot of times you see the team that wins the toss defer to the second half. Not Hazen. They said, nope, we won the toss. We want the ball. Let's go. Carlisle's head coach told us a great story earlier this week, Caleb Schock. He said uh, one of his players is a member of a hunting club in Hazen. And uh, like many of these kids, they know each other really well. They go to churches in different towns and they have friends, family at different towns. But he said, coach, you know what? We should pick a field about five miles right here in the middle between Hazen and Carlisle, pull up a couple of bleachers and just play the state championship game there. That's the mentality of these two schools, these two teams. They don't care where they're going to play. They just want to play each other and they want to get it on. And they're ready to go. As you mentioned, Coach Pesankin said they're, they're, they were ready on Monday. If, they, if they'd they have found that spot midway in between the two towns, I think they, they might have done it. But to get to play out here at War Memorial, that's a fantastic venue for this as Carlisle is running out of the field right now and, and what a great sight then for the, the Highway 70 Smackdown. I mean, it's never had a venue like this before and a big, big trophy on the line, which is something neither of these teams have brought home. 0-9 combined in state finals opportunities. That's going to change for one team today. And Hazen's coach Joe Basakin said that it would make it even sweeter to get that first title over your rival, but he said the one thing you don't want to happen is to lose to your rival and not win that trophy. So this game means a lot when they play in the regular season. This year it meant a whole lot because it was for a conference title, and this time it means even more because it's for a championship title. We are just about set to get this thing kicked off. The Hazen Hornets will receive. They are making their way out onto the field. Carlisle is ready now, and they are going to uh, be kicking into our with a little bit of a breeze. It is nice outside for December. I'll take this any day. 50 degrees, a little overcast. We had some sprinkles earlier in the day. Funny story, I pulled up to the stadium about 9.35. I, I did my radio show from here, and we get started at 10. So uh, when I got here, traffic was already backed up. Carlisle kicks it, and it's going to bounce out of bounds. Flag flies. That'll be our first penalty of the game, and Hazen will take over with pretty good field position to get this thing started. 
started. For Hazen on offense, we've mentioned him. Luke King, the starting quarterback. He's passed for over 2,200 yards. Take a look at this ratio. 29 touchdowns passing and three First interceptions. Down. I think every coach in America would take that a 29 to 3 ratio. He's also rushed for five touchdowns. Braylon Anderson, number 33, he's lined up right behind Luke King. He's going to get the ball a lot. 27 combined touchdowns, 21 rushing, six receiving. Now Anderson is to King's left. King goes in motion. King's going to keep it. And look at the Carlisle defense right away trying to set the tone. Nothing there for King. Carlisle wearing those white uniforms, all white uniforms, gold letters and numbers. Doesn't set apart that much from this distance. Check those numbers today. Hazen wearing the, the purple, all purple jerseys and pants and the white helmets. King set up in shotgun. He's got Anderson to his right. He's going to check out and look over at the uh, sideline. Carlisle playing pretty close to the line of scrimmage. Not a lot of guys in the middle of the field. They attack it wide open in the middle of the field is Josh Dawson, and Dawson's inside the red zone. He gets down to about the 13-yard line. So King connects with Dawson for the first big play of the game. 52 yards on the pass and catch that time for the Hornets, and it was just a wide open opportunity as the Bison were in single coverage, and Dawson found a way to get past that linebacker right in the middle of the field. Carlisle looked like they were setting up for the run. They had a lot of guys in, uh, close to the line of scrimmage. They had one safety back deep, and Hazen took advantage of it, and they ran Dawson right down the middle of the field. Bunch formation this time for Hazen. Handoff to Anderson. Not much there. Maybe two on the play. So Carlisle, as the first two run attempts have gone, they've passed the test. They stopped the first one for no gain. This time, a, a short gain, gain of two. Be second down. Just getting started. First drive of the game in this 2 way championship game. Well, and you're right. They are, they are prepared for that run. Crowding that line. Eight men in the box more than once. Hazen this time is going to spread it out a little bit. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Anderson in the backfield with King. Receiver comes in motion. That's Dawson. I think he's going to throw it out to Dawson. Dawson makes one man miss, but not the second. The ball's on the ground, and Carlisle's got it. That's our first turnover of the game. Dawson put it on the ground. Hazen has committed the turnover, and Carlisle picks it up. They're going to look at it, but they're going to see just what we saw up here. That ball stayed in bounds. The recovery was made. It is Bison ball, and it was kind of a dangerous pass anyway, a backward pass it looked like, or very, very close to that lateral to begin with over to Dawson, and they just knocked it loose right there. For Carlisle, that is Lawson Petrus, the sophomore that makes the tackle, strips the ball out, and Carlisle falls on it, and there you go. Carlisle with it, first and 10. They're on about the seven, eight yard line. There's a handoff right up the middle, and you got to feel if you're a Car or Carlisle fan, you just got away with one. You, you <laughs> cause a turnover inside the 10 yard line, that is a huge play in this game. And, and think about it, too, from what you mentioned with the coin toss, they'll get it to start the second half. So you're right. You, you get that extra possession. For Carlisle, Holden Jones is the quarterback. He's only thrown the ball 71 times all year. So you do the math, 12 games, 71 times. That's about 5.9. Yeah, not, not a whole lot. There's going to be a whole lot of running in this game with Jones running it and Sullivan running it. Jones. Rolls out, and on cue, he throws it. When I tell you he doesn't throw it much, and it's completed down to the 24-yard line. Thank you, Carlisle, for making me look stupid. Holden Jones completes the pass, and that is huge. They're not uh, in the shadow of their goal line anymore. They get the ball and move it out to the 24-yard line, and that was a good pass for Jones. I mean, he was right on the money, found the receiver cutting out, a little out route. Now uh, Carlisle gets a new set of downs. They mark him down at the 24-yard line. Sullivan in the backfield with Jones. Jones is going to keep it. Nothing there. 
And he was following Sullivan. Sullivan's not only a good runner, he's a good blocker. Sullivan is powerful, what his coach called. He says he has a 480-pound squat, 295-pound bench, and that time Sullivan was a, a lead blocker. But Hazen slipped that block and made the tackle. Now that was Braylon Anderson coming through. So we've seen what he can do on the offensive side. We talked about it, haven't had a chance to see too much today, but there's what he can do when he's on the defensive side of the ball. Good look at Sullivan. Big young man. Jones going to pass it again. Second time on this drive, has his receiver. and Looks like he has a first down. He's going to be marked very close to that marker. The marker, the guy holding it, wisely dropped it and got out of the way. So they're going to look at it, eyeball it, say it's a first down for Carlisle. Jones out to David Hayes. Hayes had 12 catches coming into this game for 123 yards, one touchdown on the year. So Jones has already thrown it twice on this first series. David Hayes on the catch. Jones tosses it out. Receiver coming out wide, looking for a block. Got outside and picked up uh, about six on the play. He'll move the ball to the 41-yard line to gain a seven. So second and three. Carlos got to be happy with this drive, Joey. I mean, to get the ball inside your own 10-yard line, you're just wanting to get a couple of first downs, maybe give your punter some room. They've gotten a couple of first downs now, moved it all the way to the 41. Well, and Jones has had that good protection as well. I mean, for someone who hasn't thrown the ball that much this year, he looks very comfortable back there. Jones and Sullivan, another receiver coming in motion. Sullivan gets it. He's going right up the middle. Sullivan, look at the power. That's exactly what we were talking about right there. Not a whole lot there, but he gets the first down, moves the ball to about the 46-yard line, move those chains. Well, you, sometimes when you talk about key players, if they're both on offense, you don't get the chance to see them go up against one another. That was Sullivan, who was brought down by Luke King. Star on star. And you saw that leg drive right then from Sullivan. Now, he he must have taken five steps with <laughs> King on his back. Ball's on the ground, bad snap. Jones just is going to fall on it. Did the smart thing, probably could have picked it up and tried to make something happen or maybe just try to throw it out of bounds and make have an incomplete pass. But uh, I think the coach will be happy. You just fall on it and uh, live to play another down. Well, you're exactly right. From our vantage, he had about four yards with which to work. But uh, on field level, that's probably not what he was seeing. And it was the smart decision. A loss of 12 on the play. That'll make it second and 22. First drive of the game for Carlisle. Hazen turned it over on their first drive. Handoff right up the middle. Sullivan had some room, but he got tripped up as he was making his cut. That had the uh, a chance to be a very big play. It did. Anderson comes in, grabs a foot right off, right about the line of scrimmage. And Sullivan did a good job to get an extra two or three yards, but he couldn't keep his feet for much longer. Sullivan was following his pulling guard, Bryce Isbell. Had an open hole and, yep, just got tripped up. Be third and 17. Picked up about five on the play. They've thrown it twice on this drive. Third and 17 is not a down many teams like, and especially not Carlisle. Jones with the pitch. Pitches it outside. That Hazen defense was able to string it out. Nothing doing. That will bring up fourth down. That's Cooney there on, on the, the run that time off the pitch back, and they used Sullivan as a bit of a decoy there. Had the ball in his chest for just a moment, and then Jones makes the pitch back, and you see Cooney had really had nowhere to go. Anderson was there once again, running back for Hazen, playing on defense. So Carlisle will punt. Hazen sends a man back deep. That's Schlinker. Justin Schlinker is going to let it just go out of bounds. I'm going to mark that out about the 36-yard line, so no score after each team has the ball for one possession. Now for Carlisle, too, I mean, you talked about maybe getting away with one. They, they get the ball, but they get it deep in their own territory. They move back near midfield, and so uh, a war of field position right now going back and forth. They did a good job to get it as far as they did against this tough Hornet defense, and a defense that's giving up just 7.2 points per game this season. 
Yeah, Hazen has been outstanding this year. They've got 12 wins, 10 of them by at least 40 points. That's how dominant <laughs> they've been. And all their playoff wins have been by at least 40 points. Hazen going deep on the first play, and it is completed, and it's going to go for the touchdown. How about that? Coming out of the break, and Hazen strikes quickly. Luke King to Justin Slinker. Touchdown, Hazen. He had to come back to make the catch. Had to make sure he could get it over the defender and then stay in bounds on top of that. Looked like he was going to be close to those steps. He tight ropes it and makes it on in for the score. Watch this grab. Just a 50-50 ball, and Schlinker goes up, catches it, and then is able to stay on his feet, turn, and run down the sideline for the score. 6 nothing, Hazen. 6.04 to go in the first quarter, and Hazen lines up to go for two. King in the shotgun. He's got Anderson to his left. Now Anderson goes in motion. King looking to his right. Scrambles right. Now he's going back to his left. Over the middle, it's tipped. Ball was tipped. He was trying to find his receiver in the middle of the field. So the two-point conversion is no good. That's where we are. 6 nothing. Hazen with six minutes and four seconds to go in the first quarter. You're watching the 2A state championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. I'm Jay Schwanke, the host of Life in Bloom. I want to thank viewers like you who make Create possible. Your gift goes a long way in keeping public television channels, including Create, on the air. Nailed it. Perfect. And if you're not a member, please consider supporting your local public television station today. That's it? That's it. Easy. Easy peasy. <laughs> Thanks for watching. 64-yard touchdown pass by Luke King and the Hazen Hornets are on the board first. We talk about field position and, and what it might mean in this and it really doesn't mean that much at all when you have an offense that's as powerful as that is, Wes. And uh, right off the bat, one play and one score, 64-yard touchdown drive in just one play. But Carlisle trying to make something happen off the kickoff and get it back to the 30 and a little bit beyond. You can see that patience in Hazen and that's one of the reasons why if the run game's not working, they know that in their back pocket they can run the ball or they can throw the ball and that's what you had right there join the football conversation on social media with hashtag ARPBS sports hashtag ARPBS sports so Carlisle now with another opportunity here midway through the first quarter they find themselves down by six points it could be eight but good job on defense while ago to keep the two point conversion uh, off the board and keep Luke King scrambling and now in and under center, Jones has it. The give to the right side and pulling his way forward near the 35. He's going to pick up four, and that's Sullivan. Hazen's defense. So you, have, you see the defensive line. When you see those double-digit guys in there on the tackle, Brantz Williams, 58, a sophomore. There's a good look at Hunter Smith, 66, another sophomore. When those guys are uh, there to make the tackle, that defensive line's doing a good job and not creating and, and letting that running back get to the second level to those linebackers or to the safety. But that time, the uh, defensive line won the battle of the line of scrimmage. Jones is going to go under center again. Has three in the backfield with him. Two split to the right side to give us to Sullivan again. Trying to find blockers on that right side. He'll pick up just two. You know, Jones throwing the ball in the in the first possession, though, that could be one of those wrinkles that you see. I mean, you've seen the team already once this year, week 10, come up with a loss. And you talked about that, the fact that it, sometimes it's the team that, that loses that makes the adjustments. That could have been what we saw in that first possession. Well, you want to do what you do best, and what they do best is running the ball with Jason Sullivan. But when Hazen is starting to just crowd the line of scrimmage, that time every single defender was within seven yards of the ball. you got to make Hazen get out of it. Look at it again. You can see 
see it again. Every single player for Hazen is right there next to the ball. And Sullivan goes behind those two blockers and is able to find a gap near the sideline past midfield, and he makes it down to the 46-yard line. And the Bison are on the move. The chains move as well. That's one of the good things, though, for Carlisle. If you can get a hole, if you can give Jason Sullivan some running room, everybody's so close to the line of scrimmage. Once you break through the line of scrimmage, that's where you get these big plays. Carlisle gets a big play in the, out of the running game that time. Setting up on the right hash this time, we'll see if this uh, formation looks a little bit different. They were running two blockers there, split wide to the right, or split in a slot there. Now to the left with Sullivan, the deep back. He's the tailback, and it's going to be Jones to throw it. Hit as he throws, but he gets it off anyway. Catch is made at the 12 and in for the score. Carlisle with the touchdown. David Hayes with the catch. David Hayes, second touchdown of the year. And what you had there is just straight up man to man. There were 10 guys for Hazen inside the box. They're all within the line of scrimmage and within probably six yards of the line of scrimmage. A little play action pass lets it fly. And it's a 50-50 ball. We just saw Hazen win a 50-50 ball. And that time it was an excellent pass from Holton Jones to David Hayes. And Hayes brings it in, goes in for the score. We're knotted up at six. And now Carlisle will go for two. And what can you say about Jones to stay in there and take the hit like he did and still get that pass off as he did? Sullivan back deep. Jones is going to pitch. And it's, it goes as a pass. It'll be an incomplete pass. So uh, two-point conversion fails. And Tyler, what did you see? Sorry about that. All right, yeah, look, you guys talked before the game about how familiar these two teams are with each other, about how they thought, yeah, we could just line up and play this game at any point. But what we just saw there was the wrinkle. Carlisle's been almost an exclusively running team all year. These two teams so familiar with each other, you might try to find that edge in any way you can, like breaking out the pass game like we just saw. And maybe it's that little bit of unfamiliarity, the reason why this game's tied up right now. How about Holden Jones? Three for three. 67 yards and a touchdown now. And this was a guy that you said he was averaging five attempts a game for the entire season. <laughs> yes. He's got three completions in the first quarter of the state championship game. Yeah, I would say they've made a little bit of an adjustment. His seventh touchdown pass this season. A nice adjustment. Good wrinkle. And again, heads up play. Hit as he's thrown and still got that down the field. In stride, Hayes makes the catch. So we're tied at six apiece. Two-point conversions, not good for either team, but both have a touchdown on the board. And we're two-thirds of the way through this first quarter here. State championship game, Carlisle and Hazen tied at six apiece. And a little squib kick, onside kick look right there. Goes past the 10 yards, but it's recovered by the Hornets. Phoenix Irvin there for Hazen. Just falls on the ball, is able to control it. So Hazen will take over at their own 48-yard line. Great field position for them. You know, I saw the uh, Razorbacks execute an onside kick just like that. The only problem was uh, the other team wasn't ready for it and not thinking about it. And that time it looked like Hazen was right. Yes. You know, they, they, they saw it coming, and it did not fool anybody. They were definitely ready. King back deep in the shotgun has Anderson to his left and there is the give Anderson still on his feet past the 40 he has nothing but green in front of him and he will go in for the score how about that for Hazen another one play touchdown drive 52 yards for Braylon Anderson and you saw the quickness and then you saw the speed he gets outside to his right makes one man miss Actually made a man miss there, kind of in the backfield, did a little dance, got outside, and then just sidesteps a defender. Here's a great look at the replay. Right there, shrugs off one tackle, and then there's nobody there. Uh, he is gone. They're not going to catch Braylon Anderson. I would bet he's the fastest person on this field. Once <laughs> he gets into open territory, he's going to score. Well, we see no evidence to the contrary of that right off the bat. King looks to his right. He's got pressure. He's going to throw a little bit too high into the end zone. Colton Tosh tried to make that leaping up. He couldn't find it. And so Hazen with another quick six on the board. That's all they're going to get. But they do have a six-point advantage. 
That time Hazen put four receivers to the right and just tried to flood that area of the end zone. And King had all day to throw. He was looking and looking. And finally, uh, Carlisle brought a loose backer at the end. And he came just flying down on top of King. And King had to make a decision. Do I try to maneuver past this guy or do I get rid of it? And so he just got rid of it and threw a jump ball, and it was incomplete. So the difference in this game so far is the two-point conversions, 0 for 3 combined for the two teams. Teams. But but we've seen the offense that we expected to see. And maybe a little bit different look from Carlisle, but still, they moved it down the field well once they got it back their second possession. And it did take a possession from each of these teams to really kind of maybe work the bugs out just a little bit. Well, I go back to the uh, first possession or the first time these two teams played. Hazen's quarterback was suspended for the first half. In the second half, they put up 28 points with him. They put up a lot of points with him as the quarterback. They're, they're on the their pace to do that, scoring two touchdowns touchdowns in the first quarter so we know Hazen can put up the points my question can Carlisle keep up with them today score enough points and can they get a, a, a couple of stops that they need to stay in this game getting ready to, to kick off one more time here for Hazen King puts it low and it's gonna take a couple of hops and Eventually, it will not roll into the end zone, and oh. it is down on the one-yard line. And this is reminiscent of what we saw in the eight-man championship last night. Saw something very similar. King with an incredible kick, and it just takes the roll just exactly as the Hornets need it. And so Carlisle will take over at the one-yard line. Hazen this year can do it with a, a lot of personnel or maybe not as much. Tyler, you know a little bit more about that. Yeah, guys, I just counted. There's 30 players in uniform for Hazen right now. That's actually up about 10 from where they were last week since they've got their freshman team now joining them. They got 20 guys. That's who they've rolled with all year. That's actually more than they had last season. Last season, Hazen did it with just 14 players. There was even some chatter about potentially moving down to eight man. They said no, they wanted to stay up in the two way. And clearly that's paying off in a big way now. Thank you, Tyler. I, I agree with that decision. I concur. It has definitely paid off. The one yard line now under center is Jones and he's just going to push forward and gets a lot of help from that line. He'll pick up seven from the one and his fullback. Uh, he came in and started pushing him from behind and they got a great push. Uh, it was like a rugby scrum and they moved it all the way out to the eight yard line. I want to go back to that kickoff. It was absolutely incredible that that ball spins and does a basically a U-turn on the one yard line. I, I thought the uh, Carlisle, uh, you know, returner did the smart thing, just let it roll, let it roll, go in the end zone, get a touchback. And we're going to look at it here in a second following this play, but it was just absolutely incredible that that ball turned. There's a first down for Carlisle, but it turned and stopped on the one, and the, and the returner had to, he had to pick it up. It Here's a look at the replay. Yeah. One more, one more opportunity here. By the way, that's King. Look at the English on that. And it's just rolling. He said, oh, it's going in the end zone. It's going in the end zone. And then just turns, almost looked at the end and said, there's a goal line. I got, the only thing, I wish you had just picked it up and just gotten five <laughs> yards out of it. You know, just try to get something so you're not on the goal line. That was Cooney for Carlisle. But they've been able to get, you know, a first down. You, you got to pick it up. It's a loose ball. You know, if Hazen recovers it, it's their ball there one, at the one. But just incredible that that ball spun like that. And you have to say, Jones made the most of it. There's the inside handoff to Elliott. He has enough for the first down and just one man to beat. Makes it out to the 27-yard line. Great give. Now you see there, Hazen's key king on Sullivan. Uh, they're thinking Sullivan's going to get the ball here, and they're looking for the pitch man. Said they get the quick hitter right up the middle, and they get another first down, and they've moved it out past the 25-yard line. Looks like they're on the 27 now. Caleb Elliott's been a solid running back this season for the Bison as well. 64 carries, 315 yards, four touchdowns coming in. And there's another give to the right side this time, staying on his feet and making it forward for about a yard. There's Sullivan. Second flag of the day. We haven't had many. We had one on the opening kickoff when it went out of bounds. And uh, now we've almost played a full quarter. Here's our, just our second flag of the day. Where they threw it, I, I got to think that's a holding call right there at the interior line. Holding. Yep, holding. 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 
That's Larry Stidman. He's the referee today. The center is Sam Harris. The umpire, Ryan Jacks. Linesman is Blake Crawford. Line judge, Tanner Spakes. And back judge is Bryant Tackett, the officials for today's 2A state championship. Taking a look at some of the uh, stats early in this game. Carlisle with 60 yards rushing. They got 60 yards passing. <laughs> Who would have thought they would be such a balanced offense in this game? But that's what we have so far. Hazen with 120 yards passing, 53 on the ground. So Hazen's got to be happy with what they've been able to do against Carlisle on the ground, holding them to 60 yards. And Carlisle we have seen now already. Not going to be daunted by this long first down because Jones can throw the ball, sees some pressure, throws it out, screen pass, and it's completed and out of bounds, making up some off the penalty. That's Jones now. He's four for four on the game. <laughs> I'll tell you, I, I honestly, I, I don't think I would have thought that coming in. For the season, he is 37 of 71. You mentioned those uh, attempts, just more than 52% passing. He really has uh, shaken off that number and, and is uh, writing a new script here in the championship game. Yeah, as pointed out earlier, that's 5.9 passes per mm -hmm. game. He's got five already or four already. Uh, pretty uh, crazy for this first quarter. Jones flanked by back to either side, and the give is to... Sullivan, he'll go behind the blocker and make it back close to the original line of scrimmage, but it'll wind up being third down and long. See Sullivan there getting up and getting an assist from Braylon Anderson, the, the Hazen running back. That's one of the things. These are rivals. You know, they are, you know, they, they, uh, Big time, but they know each other so well. They go to the same churches. They're a member of the same hunting clubs. You know, they, they are friends off the field, but yet they are today enemies on the field. It, but it's nice to see that sportsmanship of helping each other up. And uh, so many, many times on these big games like this, that, that's a missing aspect of the game. Yeah, and that's not the first time that Anderson's done that today. The... Snaps on the turf, but flag goes down before, and it's going to be motion. So they'll move it back five yards, third and even longer. This is weird, but it's probably a good penalty because that play was uh, the snap was bad. The quarterback uh, was having to scoop it up off the ground. It was just all out of sorts and didn't look like that play was going anywhere. And so at least they get a chance now here on third down. I know that that'll move them back five yards, but that play didn't yeah. appear like it well, was it, going it, anywhere. It was a low snap. Jones was having to get up off the turf. You're exactly right. Third and 15 after the illegal procedure penalty. And Sullivan in and out of his arms to throw across the middle. What a catch near the first down. Fantastic grab by Gabe Boyle, and he may have leaned forward enough. It is going to be close. I think he's a hair short, uh, but they are, yeah, they're going to go ahead and say it's fourth down. They're not even looking at it. Just a little bit short, but you are right. What a great catch. Here's a, a, a replay of it. Across the middle, a little behind him. He stops. Leans back, bobbles it, and brings it in. That's a double clutch right there. Fantastic job as Jones will go up under center now. He's been able to get off the one-yard line before. Can he pick up a half-yard here? Instead, it's a give. Enough for the first down, though, to the 40-yard line in the Bison. We'll move the chains after a great pickup by Sullivan. I think Hazen was thinking like me, another quarterback sneak, and they were had everybody bottled up over that center. That time they just went off guard and found a hole and picked up the first down with ease. Can we talk again about what this Bison offensive line has done so far today? That was one of the things that Coach Basakin and Hazen was worried about. Carlisle is big. They have a big offensive line, and they're starting to get a little push as we end the first quarter. But through the first 12 minutes of this one, Hazen, two touchdowns. Carlisle with just one, and the Hornets have the lead. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why, at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. 
broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Local broadcast of Arkansas PBS programming is made possible in part by Community Bakery. Scratch-made breads, pastries, cakes, treats, and locally roasted coffees served daily at two locations in Little Rock, 1200 Main and 270 Shackleford. Well, it's pretty much the, the score we might have expected, although we didn't get here probably the way folks might have expected. Carlisle's had a balanced attack on offense. We've seen passing and we've seen running. Now we'll see more of that running game by Sullivan. Runs out of real estate, though, before he can head up and make it past that corner. He'll pick up five along the way. You see uh, Hazen just bunching up in the middle, and that time Carlisle's attacking the outside, and they had a little something there, and they were able to pick up about five yards on first down. Get an inside look at what it truly means to be a farmer today and the stresses, the struggles that come with the lifestyle in Arkansas's PBS podcast, The Growing Season, available wherever you listen. Second and five now. We talked about the, the score so far. Hazen scored a couple of touchdowns after the first possession where they gave it up on a turnover. Carlisle scored a touchdown after a first possession where it had to punt. So it took both these teams a, a little while to get going. And uh, timeout called on the field. Carlisle's going to think about this on second and five. Look at some first quarter statistics. Sullivan leading the way for Carlisle with nine carries for 49 yards. And uh, Holden Jones, five for five passing. What an incredible number, 85 yards, a touchdown pass to David Hayes. For Hazen, Braylon Anderson with uh, two carries. For 53 yards, well, really one, for one for one, and the other one for 52 yards and the touchdown. Luke King three for three passing for a touchdown as well, 120 yards. So those two, those numbers, the quarterbacks have combined now to go eight for eight passing for 205 yards and two touchdowns. Yeah, I did not see that one coming. <laughs> That is a, a great start for these guys. You think about the pressure of the moment to be able to perform like that, and these quarterbacks are stepping up big. That time, uh, Carlisle, the play clock was running out on them, and the, the coach called the timeout from the sideline. He looked over at the guys. He said, that's on me. He patted himself and said, that's my fault. That's on me. Let's go. Here we go. Let's get it going. Double tight set now. And Sullivan's able to get to that left side, go behind one blocker and push his way forward for another first down for the Bison. And this looks like the Bison offense we thought we might see a lot of Sullivan in there. By the way, Sullivan uh, has the, the uh, rushing touchdown record already. We found that out just before game time. Uh, there were some, some stats that... Uh, interestingly enough, Sullivan has 44 touchdowns on the year. Craig Jackson, a former Bison, has 45, but 43 of them are rushing. Two of them were return oh, touchdowns. Okay. They kind of got mixed together. And so, actually, Sullivan is the leader now coming into this game. Everything after this is just a bonus, I guess. Jones fakes the handoff, the pass, and that looks similar to what we saw. The catch by Gabe Boyle once again. He's able to come back and adjust his body to make those receptions. Play action pass. Everybody's looking at Sullivan trying to tackle that running back, and they slip the tight end out. He's wide open in the middle of the field. And, and give Holden Jones credit. He puts it in the vicinity of Boyle, and Boyle makes an adjustment like a good receiver will do. Makes an adjustment in the air, comes down with it, and the Bison are inside the 30-yard line. Gabe Boyle, two receptions for 35 yards and both for big first down catches. I love that on the field angle. You can see just how big that offensive line for Carlisle is. That's a double tight set once again. And the ball is on the turf and it is picked up by Hazen. Landon Atkins with the recovery after the Bison were moving steadily down the field. And that is a big turnover. That is the second big turnover of the game. This one, though, for Carlisle is costly as they are marching down the field, getting close to the red zone. And you see it, Jones just puts it on the turf. It's, uh, it's almost like he got stuck on his thigh pad or his hip and you know, loses control of it. Yeah, you're right. It was 
just not cleanly received off the snap. He just never had a good hand on it. So it goes to the turf, and here comes Hazen again. Well, in the previous two possessions, it's been one play and a score, one play and a score. So we'll see what happens here. Got a full backfield, a little different look for Hazen. King, and the give is to Anderson. Bounces around, spins the other direction. King may put up a block. Cuts to the middle of the field, still on his feet. And a herd of bison are going to get there to bring him down. It's a gain of four, but I think he ran for about 35. He ran out to the right, cut it back to the left, then tries to bounce it back further outside. That's a lot of work, but he made something out of nothing, and that's what he had over that right side. Pretty much nothing as he was uh, being slung down to the ground there for Carlisle, but he's able to spin out of that, makes a man miss. And finally, uh, Carlisle is able to bring him down and uh, stop him from getting out to the outside where it could have been a really big play. There's that full backfield look again. Receivers out to either side. And the fake is to Anderson. Throwden down the field. Has a man and can't come back to make that catch. Schlinker is there. Good defense from the Bison. One-on-one -on -one coverage there. Right. Preston Parker in coverage for Carlisle. Well, I just think you're going to give your receiver a chance to make a play. Luke King throws it up. It's man-on-man -man coverage. Another one of those 50-50 balls. Here's a look at the replay. A lot of air under the ball so that the receiver can make an adjustment. He's there. He's, he got the corner. He's got his head turned around. He's looking for the ball in the air. So I think that's why they let him play. Let him play with it. Five wide out right now for Hazen. King can pick his target, finds the one across the middle of the field. That's enough for the first down past midfield. A little bit more. Joshua Dawson with another reception. Josh Dawson is our leading receiver. He's got 33 catches on the year for 522 yards, leading as far as uh, the number of receptions. Also four touchdowns on the year. And Dawson uh, just... Found a little hole there, and uh, the King found him in stride, picks up the first down. Just four wide right now with Anderson in the backfield along with King, and King inside slant once again. Catch is made for another first down. Very similar play. Just instead of uh, throwing the slant on the right, he threw it to the left, finds Schlinker, and Schlinker picks up another first down. Now you can see how King for the season would have amassed 2,270 passing yards, 34 passing touchdowns this year at the way this, the pace of this offense right now. Love that. The offensive line want to make sure they're on the same page. The big tackle goes over, the big guard goes over there and talks to the other guard. Here's what we're going to do. Back and forth, Anderson really had nowhere to go. Hopped to his left and his right. And finally, just falls forward for about a half yard. It'll bring up second down. Hazen putting up 48 points per game. That's an amazing offense. And many of those points coming in the first half. If you look at a lot yeah. of their games, they're invoking the sportsmanship rule, and uh, they're getting some of their other players some experience. Not that they got a lot of other players to come in and sub <laughs> them out, but you know, they're shutting it down and not scoring as many points as I'm sure they could. Five wide again, and King's going to run. He's going to keep it. Has nowhere to throw it, and he'll be able to pick up the first down as he goes out of bounds right at the 25-yard line. That should be enough, and it is. Knew where he needed to get, stepped right at that mark. That time the Carlisle defense did a good job. The secondary had everything covered up. I was looking downfield just like King was. He couldn't find anybody open because there wasn't anybody open. Got a little pressure, escaped out of the pocket. And, uh, that was a bolt. Was that uh, for Carlisle Foster that was putting a little pressure on him? So he gets out of the pocket and gets the first down. I think that exemplifies the strength of that defensive line as well for the Bison. See it again. Three down, four down linemen now as King looks to his left. Finds the man. Schlinker is there. Touchdown, Hazen. Just inside the pylon, and the Hornets are on the board once again. A 24-and-a-half-yard touchdown pass. Just a little corner out, and he just uh, tells the receiver, run to the pylon. I'm going to put it on the pylon. You catch it, and we're going to score, and that's exactly what they did. Great catch. Goes up it with it, catches it with his hands, and Schlinker scores another one. There are definitely some playmakers on this Hazen team. 
And it, it has to be tough for that Mison defense. One on one coverage has, has just have to be that's an assignment you look at and go, OK, I can do it, coach. But wow. See if we can get our first two point conversion of the game. They've combined to go an 0 for 3 uh, on two point conversions. No one converted yet. Receiver stacked on either side and King has to throw it quickly, nearly picked off in the end zone. It'll fall harmlessly to the turf, but no points any way around. That's Eight. pressure. Pressure right there of Carlisle up the middle. He had to get rid of it. 18 points on the board for the Hornets here in the second quarter, and they have a lead. You're watching Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Coming up on the Halftime Show, one of the longest rivalries in Arkansas high school football. This year's class of Arkansas PBS student all-stars. And a look at when Arkansas students spoke to NASA astronauts in space. It's all coming up on the Halftime Show. See you then. Since 1999, we've been with you every step of the way. From your first savings account, to graduation, to your first home. Centennial Bank is here to walk with you into the future. Though we've grown, Arkansas is still our home. We're still local bankers invested in our communities, here to help you however we can. Thank you for being a part of our journey. We'll be here when you need us. Centennial Bank, member FDIC. You've spent years exploring Arkansas with us. Did you know Arkansas PBS is also here to help you explore your financial options to be more prepared for the future. Almost two thirds of Americans don't have a will in place. Your thoughtful planning of a will or trust can help protect you and your family. It can also help guide the future of public television in Arkansas. Explore your options. Request a free estate planning booklet from Arkansas PBS today. Hazen with an 18-6 lead now over Carlisle and getting ready to kick off once again. We'll see if Luke King can make some more magic happen. Instead, going back deep, it's going to be Cooney to take it up the field on the return past the 20 and out of bounds at around the 23. Phoenix Irvin rides him out of bounds, makes the tackle. And Carlisle will try to respond. And could make it a one possession game. Arkansas PBS offers all the football games and more on demand starting next week at youtube.com slash Arkansas PBS. Luke King's 25 yard touchdown pass at the 821 mark. And it's just a, another Another big notch for him, his second touchdown pass of the game. He has 175 yards passing. Jones trying to get his team back in it now. Jones under center. And the pitch is to Sullivan. Jones a little block there as well. Makes it up to the 30-yard line, a gain of about seven on the play, going behind the blocks not only of Jones, but Caleb Elliott and that big line. It's so impressive. This is a big line, like you mentioned, but they're, they're quick on their feet, and they're, they're pulling, uh, and they're doing a good job of leading the way for Sullivan. Uh, that time he's able to pick up almost seven yards, eight yards on first down, and it was just following some of those big linemen, and uh, they were getting key blocks for him. On well, the previous possession, this is a Bison offense that was just moving meticulously down the field, and it was a turnover that put them in a bad situation. Hazen makes them pay, points off the turnover there. So the offense just needs to hang on to the ball, and Jones is going to do just that. Puts it right back into his stomach and works his way forward for the first down. Picks up five. He needed three. He made that look easy. I mean, it's almost to the point they can run that play anytime they want to. It is uh, just a, a, nut, it's a version of the quick hitter when you got the fullback hitting it uh, because they're all keyed up on stopping Jason Sullivan. Uh, they've played him enough. They know what he can do, and all eyes are on him. And so when all of a sudden somebody else has got the ball, they're just not ready for it. I would imagine if, if, if I'm one of those Horned defenders, I don't want to get beat by number six of, of anyone because they know that number. They've had that number drilled into them, and number six has the ball right now, and it's ripped out of his hands. Coming in to just take it away is Braylon Anderson. 
just reached in there and ripped the ball away from Sullivan. That's huge. Yeah, he did it all in that play. He, he ripped the ball out, and he recovered it. And he, If he would have been on the ground, it would have been a uh, score <laughs> because he was going the other way, and no one was going to catch him, but he was on the ground when he ripped it away. And and Anderson, he, he knows what to do with it once he grabs it, and he reaches in there, tries to wrap up and, and get the ball as well. Well, you're exactly right. If there's anyone who knows what to do once he gets the ball, it's Anderson. He just fell on it that time, but another big turnover. If he wouldn't have bobbled that ball, if it wouldn't have <laughs> fallen to the ground and he had to go to the ground to get it, he would have scored. It would have been a ripping score, not a scooping score. But Anderson now quickly recovers the fumble, and he lines up in the backfield exactly. and wants to make a play on offense. That's that's uh, 2A football right there. That's, that's going both ways. He'll go in motion to the left where there are three receivers on that side of the field as well. But King looks to the right, inside slant the ball, tipped, and tip drill won't work. Really could have gotten that one. Really, I, 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 I'm sure later on uh, when you talk to Carlisle's Corey Lentz, he's going to say, I should have caught that ball. He undercuts it, has it right there, and goes off the top of his hands. If he was a couple inches taller, if he could have jumped a couple inches higher, he, he would have come down with that. Cam Johnson, the intended receiver for Hazen. He's one of seven seniors on this Hornet roster. Second and 10 now. And that may have been Petrus. I can't see these numbers up here. I thought that was a, a seven. It may have been, a, or I thought I saw an eight, but it may have been a seven. So either Petrus or Lenz made a great play. Almost had the interception. King will keep it himself. Has a couple of blockers, and he moves forward for about five, maybe a little more on that play. Just kept that close to his body and, and tried to follow some, some leads. Well, and, and to your credit also, Wes, it's, it is a little bit difficult to see those uh, gold numerals on the white jerseys down there. When we have the on-the-field camera like the angle we're seeing now, it's easy to see. But now, I mean, you tell me who's who when you're looking at that angle. That is hard to see the numbers, that gold on white. It's very difficult. Third and four now for the Hornets. Got to think it's two down territory if they don't get it here. Five seconds on the play clock. Now we're going to get it off King with a quick throw. Screen pass to the left and the catch by Dawson. He's going to be close to the to the first. Now he's, he's not as close as I thought. The official on the far side of the field was walking forward, but he's still a couple yards away. Yeah, they marked him out at the 26 yard line. He's got to get almost to the 24. So it's going, it's almost fourth and two. It, I will say fourth and one and a half. King will come over and get the play. And I, I agree with you, easily four down territory for this Hornet offense, too. There's, there's no need to, to be in a hurry, but no need to be concerned either. And the way the defense is played here and in pulling off turnovers, you have to be confident. If, if you did have to send the defense back out on the field, they're going to let the play clock run down and call a timeout. Coach has sent us the stats for, for uh, both teams. They did a really good job of providing stats, but I did not see any stats for kicking. And I got to wonder out loud if they've even tried <laughs> an extra point this year because all we've seen are two-point conversions. I don't even know if they've tried a field goal or an extra point. Well, the, the roster we have here, do you see either a, a K or a K <laughs> beside anyone's name? Well, somebody's got to kick off, but that's just an additional yeah. duty for yeah. them. That's not their main well, no, duty, right? Well, we saw Luke King do it. Yeah. Hey, I no, he has the K in his name. Yeah. I'll, I'll give him that. It's, it's part of his name, but still. <laughs> Midway point here in the second quarter, Hazen on top by two scores, 18-6. And these two teams have made it to the state title game before we've talked about that. No wins combined, 0-9. I believe this is the seventh time for Carlisle to make it here, and they just uh, have come up short in all of those trips, the two teams combined. So many options here for Hazen. Uh, I mean, you can hand it off. You can run it. They, they could throw it. You know, King could run for it. He looks like King's going to be in the backfield by himself. I uh, mean, he could take off and run for it on the quarterback. It just opens a playbook for Hazen. He does a quick little pitch inside, kind of a shovel pass. It's enough for the first down and more into the red zone and down to the 12-yard line for Hazen. That was Colton Tosh on the carry. Uh, I guess when it just opens up your playbook, that's exactly <laughs> what I was talking about. That's just a quick little easy toss into the receiver coming in motion. Uh, picks up the first down, takes it to the 12. 
It looks like that playbook is is pretty well stocked, though. And when you have playmakers like this, though, you can go so many different directions. First and 10 now on the 12. Anderson in the backfield and tosses over to Dawson, spins around a potential tackler and is finally wrapped up, but he made about four on the play. And you have to give a lot of credit right now to Preston Parker. Parker, as Dawson spun out of his first attempt at a tackle, watch him. He's going to get out of it and stay with it. I mean, Parker did not give up on that play. Dawson winds up getting four yards on the on the reception, maybe three, but still, you got to give a lot of credit to Parker for not giving up on the play. Yeah, when Dawson first spun out of the tackle, I thought he was going to score. <laughs> yes. And then Parker just stayed with it. Anderson takes the ball this time, past the five, stays on his feet, and trots into the end zone for the score. Hornets with another touchdown. Braylon Anderson, 22nd touchdown on the ground this season. He's got six on the air, so that's 28 total touchdowns. But Anderson goes off left tackle, gets a good block, makes two miss, and dances into the end zone. The Hornets are going to go for two once again. No one's been successful with this play today. Tackling in space, that's what cost Carlisle that time. They had two attempts to bring Anderson down short of the goal line. Both missed the tackle, and Anderson scores. Four receivers to the right side. King's going to throw back to the left, and the ball is knocked away. Parker again. Mm -hmm. Parker from his cornerback spot did a great job. That's a little jerk route right there that, that Hazen ran, and uh, they call it a jerk route because you usually look to make the DB look like a jerk. You go inside, <laughs> and he bites on it, and you go outside. He was open. King was just a little slow getting it to him, and that's uh, what allowed the DB to get back in there and knock it down, almost pick it off. 24 to 6, and we get a moment here from Tyler Cass on the sideline. Yeah, guys, you just saw Braylon Anderson take that touchdown in. He was banged up after their last game. Didn't practice at all this week. I was out here at War Memorial earlier watching when they practiced a couple days ago. Coach said he wanted to practice, but he told him, no, man, we need you on Friday, and we're seeing it pay off now. And by the way, guys, I, I was listening. I did some investigative work on the sideline. Hazen does not have someone who's attempted either an extra point or field goal <laughs> all season long. So we're going to keep seeing those two-point conversions no matter what. My question has been answered. It, you Thank know, you, Tyler. On that big fourth down conversion a few minutes ago when they uh, pitched it to the receiver coming in motion, I couldn't find Anderson on the field. Uh, and so I was I'm look, scanning the sideline. And so they may be limiting the plays because we've seen him on defense. We have, yes. And uh, they may be giving him a break from time to time. And I was worried that maybe something was wrong with him. And then I saw him a couple plays later. And obviously he's okay scoring on that touchdown run. King will kick off and Hayes is back deep and will take it at the 11 up the middle of the field. And slung forward, get to about the 29 yard line. That's where the Bison will set up shop here and they find themselves trailing by 18 against a very, very tough Hornet offense. I will say this about Carlisle, watching their scores come in on Friday nights. There have been a couple of times in the playoffs where I thought, uh-oh, Carlisle's in trouble. They may not win this game. And these were home games. And Carlisle was a team that came back in the second half and was able, obviously, to win the game and get to the state championship game. So they're not in unfamiliar territory right here. But I will say this is a big drive. At the very least, they need to move the chains, run that clock, and not let Hazen get another opportunity to score before the half. The last thing in the world they want is to go down at the half 30-6 to six or 32-6. to six. Ideally, they will march down and score, use this last four minutes and 20 seconds of the first half, and, and score a touchdown. But if nothing else, at worst-case scenario, they want to chew up the clock, get a couple of first downs, and keep Hazen from scoring again. And that's what a ground game like this will do. Jones under center right now, has two in the backfield. Little double give that time. And really went nowhere. In fact, it may have lost a yard to your point, talking about the playoff run for Carlisle. Defeated Mineral Springs 32-28 in the opening round of the playoffs. In the quarterfinals, defeated Earl 49-34. And it was just a five-point victory over Mount Ida in the semifinals to get to this championship game. Yeah, my, I'm getting old. My memory's getting worse as the years go by. But I want to say they trailed in all three of those games. I am pretty sure they were behind 
and had to make a second half comeback. Clock continues to run now, and Bison don't seem to be in a hurry. Jones in the shotgun. Man in motion to the left. Jones hit as he throws, tipped and intercepted. Picked off at the 46-yard line. Dawson has it. Cuts back to the middle of the field. Splits two defenders. He's still on his feet to the 10, to the 5, and he's tripped up, running over one of the bison. Makes it down to the 4-yard line. What did you say was worst-case scenario? That Hazen gets the ball back and scores again. That could have been even worse with the pick six. And if it's not for the Carlisle lineman that's on the ground, he scores there. And I think he literally tripped him. You may want to watch this replay. He's jumping so over him, hurtling him. And I think that's how he falls. Sticks a foot up right there. I, it was unintentional, but that's exactly <laughs> what happened. He tripped over the lineman on and uh, fell inside the five. But Hazen with a chance to make a statement right here at the end of the first half. And Anderson was one of the two Hornet defenders in to hit Jones. Inside give and the touchdown. Colton Tosh in for the score for Hazen. And the Hornets have 30 on the board. Saw Tosh make a big play earlier in the quarter. And now Tosh gets on the board with a short touchdown run. Look at Anderson in the backfield. Anderson, as soon as the handoff happened, he had his hands in the air signaling touchdown. <laughs> he saw the hole, too, and knew Tosh was about to get in. And, and he scored enough times already this season, but when you see a hole like that from his position to, that, that just opens up, you know, he wants to be the one that's going down the aisle there. We didn't need the referees on the side to signal touchdown. Anderson was <laughs> doing was it there. for us. Full backfield as Jones... And the give is to Tosh again. Slow developing play. Really didn't seem like it was that big of a hurry to get there. And I don't think the Hornets were just giving up that two-point conversion, but they have a 24-point advantage right now anyway. It's absolutely uh, remarkable how these teams are putting up touch the six touchdowns we've had, and they've been moving the ball and running for big plays. And they get down there for a two-point conversion, and they, they're not even <laughs> sniffing it. I mean, and credit to the defenses. I'm sure that's something they've been working on. That They both know that there aren't extra points. we got to work on our two-point defense and, and stopping what the other team likes to do. So uh, maybe we just give credit to the defense for snuffing out these two-point plays. Hazen on top by 24, as, as we mentioned. And, and you look at, at their season as well. You talked about this a little bit earlier and, and what it means and, and what they've done in the playoffs. Putting up at least 40 points or at least 48 in each of their three playoff wins for Hazen. Defeated Poyan 48 to 6. Marked Tree 46 to 6. Sorry, 46 points in that one. And a semifinal win over East Poinsett County 56 to 16. It's a remarkable run. Ten of their 12 wins by at least 40 points. Mm -hmm. that, that's an explosive team. And five shutouts, too. Hayes comes up and slides in under this one. Yeah, I'm glad you said that about their defense. Uh, I wrote this down. Five shutouts. They held eight teams to one score or less. It's seven points a game. And I don't know how many. I'm sure some of these Hazen fans can tell me out of those eight one-score games, how many of those came after the mercy rule when they got some of the backups in and the team mm -hmm. scores a meaningless late score. But this defense has been awesome when you think about it. Heck, just seven points a game all season long. That's a remarkable stat. And now Carlisle, uh, look, they got three minutes and three seconds. They got to get something positive before they go in the locker room. It's a 24-point game. You score a touchdown, you get a little momentum, you got a chance. Jones throwing long to the to his left, and it was a little high. Receiver had nowhere to go. It was going to be going out of bounds anyway. Yeah, Jones has made some good throws, and we, we've done, you know we've talked about that. His first three throws were really well. He started off uh, the game uh, four for four. Now he uh, has an, incom an interception and this incomplete pass on his last two. Receiver's wide open. Um, he just uh, threw that well behind him and out of bounds. When it's happening, I'm like, oh, he's got it. He's got he, he's got a receiver, and this could be a big play. Uh, but he threw it well behind him and out of bounds, and so that was a miss for Jones that time. You wonder here, too, if they're going to keep it on the ground and try to, to run that clock, too, because you don't want Hazen to have even another opportunity before the half. And in a quarterback for Carlisle, that is Lawson Petrus. 
Yeah, change something up. They uh, that time they followed Sullivan. Sullivan's basically the lead blocker with a, another uh, offensive lineman, a pulling lineman. You see two pulling linemen in Sullivan. And the, the quarterback just gets in right behind him, has a little speed, able to pick up the first down. They move the ball out to the 38-yard line. That gives them a little life. They got to move those chains and try to get down and score before the end of the half. Again, it is a little bit tough to see those numbers. I want to make sure I saw that number seven right. Petrus, a, a sophomore, in for that one play. He checks back out. His teammates on the sideline give him a high five. Hey, you did your job well. Picked up the first down. and. It's going to be four or five more here on the ground for the Bison as the clock will run. At yeah, that time, uh, you see nine back in. That's Holden Jones, the starting quarterback. He's able to, to pick up about five yards there. And the, the thing now, you, you've gotten a first down. The clock is running. Uh, if Hazen was able to get the ball back through a punt or something, it, there's not going to be enough time. So now Carlock can go. Carlock can try to go and not worry about getting uh, giving Hazen the ball back unless there's a turnover. Jones rolling to his left. The throw catch is made for the first down. And that is a nice catch by Cooney. That'll stop the clock as they move the chains. A minute 49, so Carlisle's good. Look, they don't have to throw. They can still run the ball a little bit here. They got two timeouts left. Uh, Hazen has two timeouts left also, but no need to get in uh, too big of a hurry yet. Had nowhere to go that time. He was met soundly by that Hornets defense and maybe a little bit too soundly enough to draw a flag. Colin Key, the senior for the Hornets, back in the backfield as well as Anderson. And another flag is going to come in after the fact as well. Well, I think he got intentional grounding. He was out of the pocket but did not get it back to the line of scrimmage. We have a personal foul roughing the passer against the defense. We have intentional grounding by the offense. Those penalties will offset. We will replay the down. And that intentional grounding was the second flag. They had to look to see and verify how did this play all come about. We'll get a chance to see it here. Key comes in and a sling after the fact. That, that's that first flag. And that was an easy call. And the second one as well. Well, he's outside the pocket. If he had a receiver in the area, it would have been okay. But there was not a receiver within probably 20 yards. The ball did not get to the line of scrimmage. So that's why they checked. They said, the ball get to the line of scrimmage? They say no. But all right, then that's the flag. That's the second flag. They replay it first down again. Sullivan stumbles just a little bit and makes it back to the line of scrimmage. Clock will continue to tick here. Probably the best thing for the Bison is to just have that clock continue to move. They will have the option to receive in the second half. Got an injury timeout right now for Hazen, a player down on the field. Looks like is that 66 uh, for Hazen down on the field? Yes, Hunter Smith. And Smith, a sophomore, only a sophomore, but a big lineman for them. And when you get an injury in a game like this, you know, that, that's not it's it's tough because chances are he's playing both ways. And so you're not just losing a defensive lineman right now. You're losing an offensive lineman for when they get the ball back, uh, potentially in the second half uh, would be their next time to get the ball back. But they are uh, working on him right now. He's got his helmet off. That's good. He's getting up on. They helped him up a little bit, but he, he was able to get up on his own power. Able to put a little weight on that foot. Not a whole lot. That walk's getting a little better <laughs> as he gets across. Well, that's a, it's, it'll be a good feeling for him going to the half. He's given a solid effort today. Never want to not be able to give everything for an entire four quarters in a state championship game, so you have to be frustrated about that. It's a big sophomore right there. <laughs> yes, it is. And the crowd appreciates him making his way to the bench. He may have to, I don't know if they'll keep him there during the half. We'll see. Just a minute 23 away from the half, and we'll see if he gets just to rest there on the sideline during the intermission. In the meantime, it is second and 10 now for the Bison. Nowhere to go. A pickup of, well, not very much at all. I think that they're going to give that no gain, and so it will be third down. Yeah, maybe want to call a timeout here. That's what they've done. They just called a timeout. They'll have one more left. I thought he had a chance. 
No, they didn't call a timeout. They're going to keep going. They're just going to try to hurry up. A little more overcast here at War Memorial Stadium as the afternoon wears on. Clouds are coming in, and the clock will stop right there. It's getting a little bit darker on the field, just thinking about that right now. There was a bit of rain earlier today and wondered if that might affect one team or the other. It hasn't shown signs of really stopping either one of these offenses today, particularly Hazen's offense. Big play here. It's fourth down, fourth and ten. Ball on the 49-yard line. We want to pick up that first down here and try to find a way to get some points before they get to the end of the half. But do you want to risk turning it over and give Hayes in 48 seconds? We've seen how explosive that <laughs> offense is. Yes. Two times, one play, touchdown drives. Jones is just going to keep it. Goes behind a block, gets to the outside, 45 to the 40. He's he close it. to the first down. I think he may have gotten it. You're right. What a call right there. Fourth and 10, you're going to go uh, quarterback power over the right side. Couple pulling linemen. You're running behind uh, your big running back. He bounces it outside. And they went the right direction, too. That was big. Had plenty of field on the, on the wide side there. The clock continuing to run. Bison just need to maintain possession here. If you get a score, that's just an added bonus. Jones. All kinds of pressure. That time he had an open receiver. Uh, probably could have caught it, picked up the first down and, and more. But he, as soon as he got it, was rolling to his left. There were three Hornets chasing him. If you've been watching, too, left-handed quarterback, that toss, as he, he likes to go to that left side. And with the, the left side being the wide side of the field right now, has those receivers open a little bit better, has some room with which to work, but the Hornets on defense just get back there so quickly. Well, now all of a sudden you see well, with only third, 26 seconds left, Hazen's got more defenders back. They're playing a little bit more cautious and soft. Pitch back to Cooney. He has it past the 35 and stumbles forward near the 32-yard line, and now they're going to stop the clock. That's a good call. You, you have two timeouts left, 17 seconds. Uh, and look, Hayes, Hazen has shown the big play opportunities, but Carlock has got some big plays. And they and they got so, anytime you got Jason Sullivan, you can score in one play. You block it up right, you got a chance. And, and what I was about to say with Hazen now playing a little further back, they're playing safer. They got the safeties back. The cornerbacks are back a little bit. That opens up the middle. That opens up the running game a little bit. So if I'm Carlisle, you got another timeout. Don't be surprised, even though there's only 17 seconds in there uh, at the 32-yard line, if they don't hand it off to Sullivan or, or try that quarterback power again and see if they can't pick up 15 yards and then make it, you know, with one more chance, maybe two chances left, at least you're at the 20, 15-yard line and throw it into the end zone a couple of times and see if you can't steal a score here at the end of the first half. And you have to think that, that even the scenario that you just presented, that's predicated because Cooney was able to pick up those seven yards. You know, if, if he'd been stopped back at the line of scrimmage again, they might have just said, you know what, we're back here at the 40. We don't have anything to do. But now they, they feel a little bit possibly of that momentum. Jones is in the shotgun, has Sullivan to his left. Cooney in motion. Jones, three steps back. A little toss over to no one in a white jersey. That one winds up being incomplete, but it was very, very nearly picked off. Colin Key, he, I think he was a little surprised with it. He's back in coverage, and all of a sudden it came straight to him, and he just dropped it. That's one of those he's going to wish he gets another opportunity to get that. But Key is a uh, two-way player for Hazen, plays a little bit on center. We talked to him last night on Fox 16 Sports, and uh, just an intense young man and was looking so forward to playing against some of his friends and people he knows from Carlisle. Fourth down now, and Jones is under center. And there's the give to Sullivan. Has a block. And has a little room to the outside past the 30, five, or 25 and down to the 22-yard line. The clock will stop long enough to move the chains. And they're going to call a timeout to the Bison will have one more opportunity now at about the 22-yard line. I thought they may do that on 
third down instead of throwing it. I, I figured the opportunity would be there to give Sullivan or one of the backs or quarterback a chance to run, pick up some, a nice chunk of yards and move that ball down. But now you got one chance, throw the ball into the end zone. And uh, I'm, I'm sh I saw the last time Carlisle did this. They kept Sullivan back there as an extra blocker. I mean, you got five good offensive linemen. Who better to be that sixth lineman? Than, I mean, Sullivan, he is a strong kid. We were yeah, he's told not he is, small either. No, he is a uh, – uh, uh, the, they call him the leader. He, he is this the leader of this team, but not only powerful, but the, the leader. And I uh, expect we may see him back there. I wonder if they got even a, a maybe a screenplay. I don't know if it would work here with Hazen playing so far back. I doubt they're going to put a lot of pressure on the quarterbacks. So I don't know if you'd slip a screen in, uh, but they, they got to get the ball somehow into the end zone. Find some kind of a one-on-one -on -one situation where you can get a jump ball and let that receiver go to work. Double tight set now. Six seconds remaining here in the first half. The one opportunity. It's a reverse. And. Hayes tried to find somebody down the field. Instead, he couldn't find anyone in the end zone, so he just ran forward with it. Hayes makes it to the 15-yard line. Clock runs out here in the first half. And uh, final thoughts of the first half before we take the break. Well, turnovers for Carlisle. That's going to be uh, the first thing they got to stop. They, gotta, they cannot turn the ball over when you're playing a team as good offensively as Hazen and even a team as good defensively as Hazen. You can't afford to make mistakes, shoot yourself in the foot. So they can't afford any more turnovers. And they're honestly, they're going to have to go get some turnovers. They're going to have to stop Hazen, get a couple of turnovers, and capitalize on those if they're going to get back in this ball game. Hazen with a 36 lead and halfway to uh, its first state title as we have an opportunity now. Tyler's on the sideline uh, talking with Coach Pesenkin. Yeah, Coach, we saw Carlisle kind of come out and throw the ball there more at first than they have all season. Just how well is their defense adjusting? Uh, they're starting to adjust. No, our secondary is one of our biggest strengths. You know, we have got we came into the game with 20 interceptions and we're giving up pass plays. We've got to get better at that and recognize formations. Big thing killing us right now is we, we've left 10 points on the field on, on extra points. We've got to do a better job on that. With the lead like you've got, what's the message to the team at halftime? Hey, don't let up. Because, hey, they had a bad half. We can have a bad half. So, we've got to play with even more energy. Perfect. Appreciate you, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Tyler, with Coach Besenkin down there. 30-6 to six lead. Opportunities to improve for the Hornets. Opportunities to make something different happen and try to change this script for the Bison. Second half coming up in a few in the moment. Uh, we'll have our halftime. You're watching Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service, real people. Hi, I'm Susie Everett, wishing you and your family a Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday Season. With our busy lives today, we often forget the greatest gift of Christmas. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. I hope all of us will take the time and share the love of Christ this season. May your holidays be filled with joy and blessings. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from all of us at Everett the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Hey everybody, David Basil here. It is halftime at War Memorial. That means we are back here at Arkansas PBS Studios to share with you a little bit of what we've been working on. In a few minutes, Ed Leon is going to catch you up on the bigger picture, if you will, at Arkansas PBS. Ashley King is going to fill you in on some student athletes who are excelling on the field and more importantly, in the classroom. And we're gonna take a look at one of the biggest football rivalries in the state. But first, the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame was established way back in 1958 to honor and memorialize outstanding individuals and to promote legacy and inspire younger generations. Take a look. 1958 was a year of change in America. 
The Hope Diamond was donated to the Smithsonian Museum. The microchip was invented. NASA was created by President Dwight D. Eisenhower. And in Arkansas, deep in the recesses of Bull Memorial Stadium, a group of prominent Little Rock businessmen founded the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame. The original mission of the Hall of Fame was simple enough. To recognize and induct individuals and teams that have brought honor to the state of Arkansas, and we do provide scholarships for student athletes. It's a great place for young people to get inspired, to come here themselves and to walk through and to read these stories and think, someday that can be me. We inducted our first class in 1959. We have over uh, 500 inductees. Basketball players, football players, baseball players, archery or in sharp shoot, trap shooting, runners, golfers. Horse race racing, car racing. It's a great cross-section of what sports is. For more than 60 years, the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame worked to honor those most accomplished athletes who call the natural state home. Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame selection process is simple but a little complicated. You can go online and nominate your favorite sports hero. That person goes into a master database. Selection committee comes up with those 50 people on the voting list for each category. That is mailed out to the dues-paying members. You pick your top five. Those come back, the top two vote getters in the regular category category automatically get in. The top vote getter from the senior category automatically gets in. And then the board votes on the remaining inductees. And then you wait for a call. When you get the call, it's a big deal. You know, when I was inducted to the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame, or however, when I got received the call, I feel like I've reached something. Being from a small town, rural area, which Arkansas is a lot of that way, and uh, when you get picked for something this prestigious, it has a huge impact on your life. It seemed to me it was the cap of my athletic career. I just seemed like all the hard work had paid off for me. All the people you meet, all the connections you make. They welcome you. It, it was remarkable to me the night that I came to be inducted because the former inductees, they want you to feel like, hey, you're part of us now. Clearly, sports in Arkansas isn't all fun and games. Sports is a common ground that brings everybody together, and we compete. We want to see a good battle, but we want to shake hands afterwards, and, and there's a mutual respect for everyone that played. Athletics teaches you discipline. It teaches you teamwork. It prepares you for life. It got me a full scholarship at the University of Central Arkansas. Eventually, the Hall of Fame had grown to need a new home, and by early 2007, construction was complete on the almost 14,000 square foot Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame Museum, located in what is now Simmons Bank Arena in North Little Rock. All the communities in the state have an opportunity to make sure their heroes are remembered, and they do that. You walk through this Hall of Fame, see a helmet from some small community here or a smaller college maybe than the Razorbacks are. Jerseys, pictures, statistics, all kinds of memorabilia. Like a picture of Scottie Pippen standing next to a polar bear for some reason. It's just like creating the milestones of the people who started and who laid the foundation. Their favorite thing is always the bears back there in the car, the Mark Martin car, but they actually get to see how sports in Arkansas started. Everybody as they were growing up had their favorite sports heroes. We preserve those sports heroes for the different generations. They can look there and say, wow, this person overcame this. They came from maybe an impoverished background or maybe a, a, a beginning that wasn't necessarily headed towards sports, but ended up there someday. We have a great sports legacy here. It's a great representation of what this state is about. Hardworking people who endured, who achieved. And so to have that legacy as a, in a permanent place here, I hope people embrace that and hope they come here and enjoy it. Look at the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame as motivation and say, hey, one day that's going to be me. Now you know the history, you can be a part of the future of the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame. Let's turn now to the student athlete with emphasis on the student part. Ashley, what do you have for us? Thanks, David. We talked to schools across the state of Arkansas to find out about those athletes that not only excel on the field, but in the classroom too. Here's the Arkansas PBS Student All-Stars Class of 2022. We're going to start with our eight man honoree Jackson Martin. Jackson is a senior quarterback for the Woodline High School Bears. He has a 3.5 grade point average. He plans to attend college and become a coach or study to be a real estate agent. Out of 2A, let's meet Luke King. Luke is a senior quarterback and linebacker for the Hazen High School Hornets. He maintains a 4.0 grade point average and wants to play college football and ultimately become a dentist. Moving on to 3A, here's Sawyer Hoskins with the Melbourne High School Bearcats. 
This senior offensive and defensive linebacker is a four-year starter who holds a 4.2 GPA. He also scored an amazing 33 on the ACT exam. He plans to become a pharmacist. Our 4A All-Star this year is Jalen Dupree. Jalen is a junior running back and linebacker for the Malvern High School Leopards. He has a 3.5 grade point average. Following high school, Jalen plans to play college football and major in physical therapy. Coming around to 5A, we have Tavion Haney of the Parkview High School Patriots. Tavion is a senior cornerback and has a 3.5 grade point average. He has received the Outstanding Academic Excellence Award and has won all conference and all state honors. He plans to continue playing football while seeking a degree in engineering or learning a trade. The 6A representative this season is Hayden Webb. The senior offensive lineman for the Greenwood High School Bulldogs maintains a 4.0 GPA and scored a perfect 36 on the ACT exam. He plans to attend the University of Arkansas at Fayetteville after graduation. And finally, we wrap up with our 7A All-Star, Abe Owen. Abe is the senior quarterback for the Cabot High School Panthers. He has a 4.0 GPA. After high school, he plans to go to college and medical school to become an orthopedic surgeon. Congratulations to this year's honorees. Way to go. You know, we may see some of these faces again in April here on Arkansas PBS for Quiz Bowl. Now, if you haven't seen Quiz Bowl, you'll want to make a note to watch this year. Some of the smartest high school students in the state meet up right here in this studio and square off not only for bragging rights, but for some pretty big checks too. And it's all live right here on Arkansas PBS. Speaking of what is on Arkansas PBS, if you're not a regular viewer, here is Ed Leon to tell you what you've been missing. Thanks, Ashley. Hey, we don't want you to miss a thing here on Arkansas PBS because we're doing a lot. From these sports broadcasts that we do every year to the recent statewide political debates to Arkansas stories made just for you, we have something for everyone. And of course, our foundation here is education. Now this is where the magic happens. Arkansas PBS was made for educational television. We want to make learning interesting and fun. It's our mission to build lifelong learners. And part of that is keeping you well informed with our current affairs programming. For almost four decades, Arkansas Week's been keeping you informed of the news and issues that matter most. I'm Christina Munoz for Arkansas Week. How huge is agriculture slash farming here in the state of Arkansas? The stress farmers and ranchers face every day can be overwhelming. But these resources are for all of our Arkansas farmers. Election day just around the corner and everyone agrees there's a lot at stake. It's analysis and insight on the races you care about. Uh, that's just our effort to make sure that testing continues to be available in Arkansas. Veterans in Arkansas, we got you. Your well-being is worth fighting for. Everybody made that sacrifice to make sure I was going to be all right. So my, my biggest thing is to accept help. We're building lives. We're building community. Keeping you informed and engaged, that is public media. And that is what the dedicated people in this building work to do every day. All right, now we can't go on without giving you a sneak peek at some upcoming productions. Watch this. He's an important person in U.S. history, and so to do the sculpture, it puts a lot on your shoulders as an artist that you capture the spirit of this amazing individual. I was only three, and my mother just making sure that everything was right. We're all hanging out, we're all cooking turkeys. We get an opportunity to help a family have a good Thanksgiving. 
They get it to Williams, throws it down! I mean, she just stepped up and nailed the biggest shot right there. He rattles it home! With a right hand, tie ball game! When you gonna wake up? Y'all gonna wake up when the season over? That's swung on, lifted high to right field. He's going back to the warning track. It's out of here! I would have never known the things I know now without that program. It really helped me advance my opportunity to this career field. There is something for everybody here on Arkansas PBS. It is our mission to ensure that and we want you to join our community. Scan that QR code on your screen if you're enjoying these championship games, if you appreciated the amount of time we dedicated to our debate week coverage before the elections, if Arkansas stories are important to you, then sign up and join us. Become a part of the team. That QR code will tell you how to do it, and you'll see it pop up throughout these championship games. All right, I think we've got time for one more Arkansas story, right, Baz? Yes, we do, and rivalries in Arkansas. We've got some good ones. One of the biggest pits, two close-knit communities in central Arkansas against each other. The game got so big, they had to move it to War Memorial Stadium. Here's a look at the Salt Bowl. If you've never been around it, it's kind of hard to explain and hard to understand. Biggest rivalry in the state of Arkansas. The two communities are close together. You don't know when you leave one and enter the other. You go to the right, you're Benton. You go to the left, you're Bryant. The district line's convoluted, to say the least. Coming down the interstate, you really can't tell which one's Benton and Bryant. It is uh, 634. We are here at Big Red here. This is our annual uh, salt bowl show. We're in Bryant proper, right? We're in our... Oh, wait, wait, ben proper. Is that right? A lot of these athletes go to the same church. They go to the same stores. They eat out at the same places. So many families who grew up in Benton, who, who you know went to Benton, whose kids went to Bryant, vice versa. The rivalry between the two, I think it's because they are so close. I always talk trash. My name is Lorelai and I go to Benton School, but my mom went to Bryant schools. I'm a sophomore at Benton High School, but my mom was a Bryant cheerleader. So obviously I am partial to Bryant Blue, and the girls are a little, little more partial to their Panther Maroon. I mean, I like to think that this looks a little, a little better, but... <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> and we are a true house divided. I say like, y'all are going to lose at the Salt Bowl. Even though you were on the cheer team, that doesn't mean you need to root for them because they can still be bad and stuff. Give me the first year Benton and Bryant played. Boom. Let's he see knows. Mm. He knows. That's a good guess. It was 1970. Roger. Four. 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 Wow. 1974. It's a C.W. Lewis Stadium where many, uh, many a games between the Benton Panthers and Bryant Hornets uh, beginning in 1974 were played. And really where the Salt Bowl began, the, the 1999 game when you had over 12,000 people. And then also up on top of this building. Uh, there were people standing <laughs> as far as you could see. I was just dumbfounded. I remember Mayor Farmer now, Mayor Farmer, then Coach Farmer, saying something to me. He's like, you know, we probably need to think about doing something different. And we started talking about what could we do to make the game bigger and better. We've now reached the point that both schools have, have outgrown the ability to play this game in our own stadiums. We've got to look at doing something different, and why not go you know, War Memorial Stadium. Quickly became more than just a football game. Started a Salt Bowl t-shirt. That's what started the hot dogs that we gave away for free to attract people to come to the game. Uh, that eventually led to big Arkansas's largest high school tailgate party, as we call it. The one thing I think I'm the most proud of is we also wanted it to give back to our community. We've had charity partners, the Arkansas Food Bank, we've always done a blood drive, and we've had partnerships with the Cancer Society or Goodwill. And so it's always been more than just a game. People were out there, they got their maroon on, they got their blue on. One big family, because it's about family. That's what community is about, is a family. And they're having a great time. But buddy, when you walk through that gate and you take your side, 
whether it be the Bryant Hornet side or whether it be the Benton Panther side, it's all over because it's war. When that whistle blows at seven o'clock and that kickoff's given, it's war and everyone's pulling for their team and yelling and screaming and, and, and it's just fully spirited and having a great time. But you know what, once the game's over, people intermingle again in the parking lot and a family again. Oh yeah, we love a good rivalry. What do you guys think? Oh, there is nothing like the energy of a rivalry game. And the best part about a rivalry, there's always next year. That's right, it was my favorite part of playing football, especially when we won. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now if you at home want to see your school's rivalry featured, hit us up on social, use the hashtag ARPBSRival, and maybe we'll be in your town next. Well, that's it for us on the Halftime Show. Now let's get back to War Memorial Stadium for the second half. Right here on your home for the high school football state finals, Arkansas PBS. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. The Hazen Hornets fans have a lot to cheer about. Up 24 points in the state championship game. The 2A state championship, the Hazen Hornets with 30 on the board. The Carlisle Bison with just six. And it's been a back and forth game. You look at some of the statistics from the first half and, and in total yards, it's relatively even. Hazen with 280 total yards and Carlisle with 255. But on the scoreboard, it tells a different story. Well, the uh, turnovers, that's not listed. I was looking, that should be the first thing listed on this one. That's the key thing for Carlisle, uh, the costly turnover, which I know Hazen had one. They were driving down first drive of the game, and they fumbled in inside the 10-yard line. But that's been the difference for Carlisle. They've uh, had some costly turnovers. It's been a pretty well-played game besides that. Not a lot of penalties, uh, but Hazen has been able to take advantage of, of the, the opportunities they've had, and they're punching it into the end zone. You see that passing yards, 114 yards it's been a balanced tack 141 rushing yards for Carlisle and it has been balanced back and forth but Hazen with the quick strike able to get the first touchdown in for the score that time Schlenker and just right off the bat one play once they got things going trying to counter the Bison get a big touchdown score as well and that was David Hayes with the reception a lone score for the Bison today but Anderson, the other direction, Braylon Anderson with six more points. And we say six, only six, because no two-point conversions have been successful so far. Another touchdown throw in for the catch that time uh, for uh, uh, Hazen. Also Schlenker with the touchdown, running it in. Anderson, he's got two on the day as well. Schlinker and Anderson leading the way for the Hazen Hornets. They're down 30 to six. Now Carlisle needs to make a second half move. Let's go down and hear straight from the coach. Yeah, coach, you guys just came out of the locker room now, spent a little bit more time there than the Hornets. What was the message to the team? Uh, big thing was we've got to do a good, lot better job taking care of the football on offense. Uh, you know, we've turned it over twice, and when you turn it over against these guys all year long, they've got points off of turnovers, and so that's been something that got us behind early. So we got to hang on to the ball, and then on defense, we got to do a little bit better job with our assignments. We've had busts, uh, and really we've put the defense in, in bad situations just with the turnovers, uh, putting them down in short field, and giving Hazen a lot of momentum. So we've got to, got to take care of that in the second half. You guys have had your backs against the wall before this season. Just what's the confidence level at with the team? Yes, that's what we told them. In two of our three playoff games, we've been down at halftime. Uh, we were able to come back in the second half and, and keep fighting and fighting and fighting, just one drive at a time. And so that was the message. We've just got to come out this first drive, try and put points on the board, try and get a stop, and then do it again and, and whittle this thing down to a one-score game, hopefully, before the fourth quarter. Thanks so much, Coach. Yes, Appreciate sir. it. Thank you. All right, that's a Carlisle coach Caleb Shock. Is he looking to make a comeback second half kick it off in a couple minutes? We'll head back upstairs to you guys. And we find out that Wes's memory is not that bad after mm -hmm. all. You did, you did recall that and the fact that they have been down in these playoff games. So it should be nothing new. Now, granted, this is a radically different opponent, though. This is a Hazen team that can put up a lot of points. So the first thing you got to do is get some stops. 
first thing that uh, needs to happen is Carlisle has to score. Carlisle has to go down. And I hate to use the word ha- has to go down and score. They, I guess they don't have to, but, man, they need to get some momentum on their side. And, and to do that, you take this kickoff here, you go down and score, make it a 30-12 game or 30-14 to 14 ideally uh, because you think about it, it is a 24-point game with these teams. That's a three-possession game. Now, the, no one's been able to convert a two-point conversion, but if you can figure that out, three possessions, you can get three uh, three touchdowns and three two-point conversions, and you could be right back in this game and have a chance to do it. But first things first, they got to get this opening kickoff. I expect to see a lot of Jason Sullivan. Uh, When you struggle, uh, it it is football. What do you do when you struggle? You go back to the basics. And what's the basics for Carlisle? It's running the ball, and it's Jason Sullivan. I think they got to ride that horse. That would be a shame that you get to a state championship game and you look back and you regret that, man, we didn't give our horse enough carries. I expect he's going to get uh, plenty of carries in this next drive. And, again, he's he's averaging 20 carries per game this season. He has 17 right now, but he doesn't wow. have a touchdown. I would have never and, guessed I, I 17 know. carries. I, I, I thought he had like seven. Well, in light of that still, though, I mean, if you think that way, it probably looks that way to everyone because, I mean, we haven't seen the results. And, again, this is the leader all time in Arkansas high school football in touchdown, rushing touchdown scored. He doesn't have one yet today. The Bison will get it out to nearly the 40-yard line to set up shop here to open the second half. Carlisle trailing by 24 points here in the state championship game. Both teams have been to this big stage before. Neither team has come away with that gold trophy, one will today. And Carlisle saying, we're not out of this yet. Give us a chance here in the second half. So, Troy Mitchell has been doing the stats here for us at the state championship game for 20 years. If, it'd be some, if it was somebody else doing the stats, I'd say they're dead wrong. There's no way that Sullivan has 17 carries. <laughs> I know Troy knows his stuff, and so I'm not second-guessing him. Exactly. I, I, I would agree with you entirely. Well, there's Sullivan, who's still on his feet and gets past midfield. They're trying to swipe the ball away from him again. And at this point in time, I'm thinking uh, that that was great. Anderson did was able to rip the ball away from him one time. With a player like Sullivan, I would think your main focus would be you've got to bring him down. Yeah, they, uh, he did it again. That was Anderson that tried to swipe it away from behind instead of making the tackle, trying to knock that ball loose. You'll see it right there, but uh, wasn't able to do it. Sullivan keeps running, keeps his feet moving, and – he moves the ball all the way to the 42-yard line. I'll say it again. You ride that horse. He's what got you here. Jones in the backfield, and he'll keep it himself going behind a Sullivan block, and he picks up three on that carry on first down. And who was leading the way for him? It was Sullivan. Every play. 18 carries, 98 yards. Well, today, this may be a game where they, they're going to need him to go about 30 carries or more and uh, pick up 200. He's averaging, again, on the season, and, and that would be what they've gotten from him this year, averaging 227.3 on the season. They need a big day and maybe even to top that average to get back into this. Little screen pass to the right side, in and out of the hands of Hayes. He can't bring it in. It'll bring up third and seven. Just let him a little much, and that's okay. As a quarterback, I'd rather you throw it a little in front of him so he can run forward and catch it and be have your forward momentum instead of throwing it behind him. He has to stop, then regather himself, and by then the defense is on top of you. You're not going to pick anything up. Well, and especially at that point in the field, too. I mean, it would be a dangerous pass behind him. Third and long now. And Jones has Sullivan to his right. Cooney in motion. He'll be in the backfield as well. The give is to Sullivan, and he's going to keep on pushing his way forward. He'll come up just short of the first down, but a great run of six. They're going to mark him a full yard short of that first down, but no doubt Carlisle will go for it here on fourth down. Uh, We've seen a couple of things from them on fourth down. We've seen the quarterback sneak, and they've snuck it with the quarterback and picked up about five yards. Uh, But then uh, when Hazen started to bunch up the middle, they popped him off guard for an easy first down conversion. Jones is under center, and he's trying to push forward. He'll be slung back. I don't think he got it. 
Don't think so. I was surprised that they didn't have Sullivan come in and push, give him that extra push. Instead, Sullivan ran out to the right to try to fake out the defense that they were going to pitch it to him, and they're not even going to measure. He uh, did not get it. Well, we saw Jones a little earlier when Carlisle had the ball on its own one-yard line, and with a big push from behind, he was able to pick up seven yards, go all the way out to the eight, and give the Bison a little bit of room, not able to pick up even much more than a half yard on that carry. So Hazen gets it right back. Their first possession here in the second half and a 24 point advantage. King and the give is to Anderson. Little room, lot more room. Splits two in the secondary. Nothing but green in front of him and he will take it all the way in for the score. 67 yards and for the third time today the Hornets score on their first play Anderson had 67 yards before that carry he got 67 <laughs> yards on that carry he now has 134 yards on the day six carries 134 yards that is that's his third touchdown of the game Anderson is putting on a show he really is and you know we've talked about Luke King and what he can do through the air Braylon Anderson what he has done on the ground today has been big as well. And now we're seeing also a little bit more balance in that Hornets offense too. Where he split those two safeties and just was <laughs> shot out of a cannon. He, he hit that so fast they never had a chance to catch it. Four wide receivers for King. Looking left, keeps looking left, throws across the middle, tipped and caught. Two point conversion, good for the first time this afternoon. Colton Tosh with the reception, and the Hornets are now up by 32. Big, big touchdown and two point conversion here in the third quarter. We'll take a break. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Local broadcast of Arkansas PBS programming is made possible in part by Community Bakery. Scratch-made breads, pastries, cakes, treats, and locally roasted coffees served daily at two locations in Little Rock, 1200 Main and 270 Shackleford. The Hornets are trying to put things away here in the early going of the second half. Braylon Anderson with a huge touchdown run and Luke King set to kick off. Going to bounce a couple times and picked up just inside the 20. And Hayes will make it a little ways beyond that, but they'll set up shot behind the 25. And the Hornets uh, up by 32. For a copy of this game or any state championship game, go to mmproductions.net to place your order. There's the number right there, or there's the uh, address right there on your screen. Screen mmproductions.net. Carlisle has shown that it can throw the ball a bit today. It's, it's a fairly balanced attack. At this point in time, Wes are going to need to throw it a little bit more, try to get back in this without eating up too much clock. Yeah, it's a desperate situation, and I know they say desperate times call for desperate things, and uh, I think they caught Hazen a little off guard. Uh, and what they were doing, they were getting some one-on-one -on -one situations because they were, Hazen was all bunched up at the line of scrimmage because they were so intent and focused on uh, stopping Carlisle's running game that it was creating some great situations in the passing game. But if Hazen starts to feel like they're going to throw and they're backing off the line of scrimmage, then it's going to be difficult for them to throw the ball. Carlisle's just not a throwing team. It's just that simple. So uh, best case scenario, you just got to keep running the ball, do what you do, and, and have faith that your guy's going to bust one. Look, they could, they, could throw, or they could run for 75 yards here a lot easier than they could throw for 75 yards, to be honest with you. Petrus back in at quarterback, and he keeps it. He'll pick up four, and that's very similar to what happened back in the first half. Petrus came in, sophomore comes off the bench, 
takes that snap from the shotgun and picks up about four. He'll go over and have a seat. That gives Jones an opportunity to come back in. Now, I had two receivers over here to the left side. Uh, possibly a little bit of a decoy move right there. Great opportunity for Petrus to come in and get some get some snaps here in this championship game. Yeah, and maybe they're setting something up. You know, he, he comes in, he uh, runs it over that right side every time, and maybe they have a play off of that that Hazen thinks, well, here he comes again. He's going to run over the right side. Maybe they can get something uh, uh, and fool them with it. Sullivan goes behind two blockers, cuts back to the inside, still on his feet past the 40. Luke King is there to bring him down at about the 46-yard line. A full backfield again, a couple of blockers in front of Sullivan, and they pick up the first down. Yeah, great uh, execution for Carlisle here. You see Sullivan, he uh, has one offensive player out there, cuts back, gets that block, and uh, the pursuit of King uh, is able to chase him down. And uh, That's that Hazen defense there, though, for you. They have speed. They have some more speed on that, that they can chase a play down. There may be some other teams that Carlisle plays, they don't have that kind of speed. Sullivan has gone to the house. He just keeps it going and is able to go 60 yards there, but that Hazen speed is able to catch up with him. Same look with Jones under center again, and pretty much the same result as Sullivan will pick up the first down and more dropped at the 39-yard line, back-to-back -back plays, going to the right behind two good blockers and a great push from the line, and Sullivan moves the sticks again. King saves the touchdown. If he doesn't make that tackle, King was unblocked, and uh, that's the one guy. Sullivan makes him miss or breaks that tackle. He's gone, but King, we see him at quarterback. He's also doing a good job at linebacker, and he makes the tackle and, and keeps Carlisle from scoring there. Ethan Foster and Caleb Elliott as up backs there in front of Sullivan, and this time a pickup of just two. Keller Kilgore checks out. Drake Burks coming in for Carlisle. Line's done an admirable job today. Full backfield once again. They're going to shift it to the left side this time. And Jones with the pitch back to Sullivan. Tries to get through two blockers. Stops and trying to find a hole at the hash mark. Can't really do it. A game of just one more. The time Hazen had enough guys on the outside just kind of overwhelmed the blockers. They had two block blockers out there in front of Sullivan, but there were probably four Hornets, and uh, he was trying to get a block, got finally the cut back, and was able to uh, pick up just what he could out of the play. Just wasn't a whole lot there that time. Third and seven on the way for the Bisons. Clock running about the midpoint here in the third quarter. The Bison need a score big time. Full backfield once again. And the give is to Sullivan, a push, but he's not going to get very far at all. And, you know, needing to pick up seven plus on that play on third down, clearly it's four down territory. That really, that was designed to pick up just one or two, and that's what they got. I think they were trying uh, to to bust one on there on on uh, Hazen. Hazen's got everybody up at the line of scrimmage, and once again, they, I mean, there are there are eleven players within five six yards of the line of scrimmage. If you can just get that one guy, get through that one gap, you're gone. It's going to score for a touchdown. They just they missed the block on that backside. The Bison know that it is four down territory. The Hornets know that as well. And so Carlisle takes a timeout. It's first timeout taken here in the second half. It's been a great day for football here. A little overcast. The sun's come out some, but it's a, a wonderful day for football and a huge crowd on hand here in War Memorial Stadium to watch these two teams play. Rivals who are separated by just nine or ten miles. It is a sight to see when they play at Hazen or at Carlisle during the regular season. You will have the stands full. You will people have people standing around the fence, around the stadium, four, five deep. It is just uh, there. You're looking for somewhere to stand and see over somebody else. And it, it's great. It's it's two way football at its best. The crowds are awesome, and uh, it, it is it's loud. It creates for a, a great atmosphere. Uh, I, I know it's 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 nice and loud down there now, but just imagine in a smaller <laughs> yes. situation where you have this many people, it can be very intense. Tied into the right, extra blocker over there, Jones under center, an I formation look now for the Bison. Blocker in front of Sullivan, works his way forward past the 30. I think he has enough for the first down, he does. 
They've had a lot of success with that play. We've seen this play call probably four or five times. They keep going back to it time and time again. Pull a couple of linemen. They get a full house right in front of Sullivan. Sometimes it's been the quarterback leading the way. And they've uh, been able to kind of overwhelm uh, Hazen with the number of bodies they have going to that right side. And as long as the guys can pick up a block and, and not miss anybody, it has resulted in some big plays, and it did. It picked them up at first down, and Carlisle's drive will continue. So they go with the bread and butter. The offense, the ground game. Tight end left now. Player in the slot. Give us to Sullivan. Goes behind his blockers and just keeps churning those feet. And they'll push forward to about the 22, maybe just a little bit farther than that. Good, good pickup on first down. Yeah, this is Carlisle football now. I mean, they're they're just putting their head down, getting a push from the line. Sullivan's using his legs and he's picking up five, six yards. And that's fine. They're, they were happy and content picking up six yards of carry. The problem is they're down. 38 to 6. They're down 32 points. This is what they needed to happen in the first half to keep it close, run that clock, keep Hazen's offense off the field, limit the number of possessions they get. Um, if they could have had this going uh, and from the very beginning, which they did, uh, but then a couple of fumbles hurt them. But uh, this is what that's what I was talking about at halftime. You do what you do best, and that is run the football. And uh, yeah, you were hoping to catch them off guard there, thinking run, 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 and hit over the top with the pass. But Hazen's defensive back and the safety, they were there. They had that covered. They're, that was going nowhere. That was the best thing that could have happened right there, an incomplete pass. Because if he had thrown it on target, it's picked off. Exactly. That That's exactly right. Ball didn't go where it, where Hayes thought it was going to go, and, and uh, Hazen didn't have the opportunity. So third down and short on the way here. And every now and again, just to throw a little wrinkle in there, I think that was, a, that was a good call on second down. It didn't work. Full backfield once again now. And the give is to Sullivan. Tries to cut the corner. Goes back a little bit. Lowers his shoulder and pushes forward for the first down. And that was a, a, a really good move there. Maybe going back a little bit to catch the angle so that he could go more north and south on the field. Sullivan's hurt. Uh, he, yeah, he's going back down. He's, he's trying. Man, look how tough this kid is. He is a gamer. He is powerful. And this is this is his moment. This is what he's been waiting for. Uh, but you see the defender go down, get him by the knee, and uh, I hope he's okay. He is still trying to shake it off. He's been over at the huddle. Uh, he doesn't want to come out. This is you know this is his opportunity, man. He's been dreaming of this moment his whole life. Let's see if they don't use him as a decoy here and let him try to try to get a little feeling going. Well, and when you're a senior, you definitely don't want to, to go out, and he doesn't there on first down. I'm not sure if the ball they didn't did. go out, and that is exactly what happened. Yeah, they got they, uh, somebody tackled the ball. I mean, Elliott had a good hole. He was coming in, but then Hazen, just somebody put a helmet on the ball, and the ball came out, and Hazen jumped on it. Might have a cramp out there on the field. Players stretching just a little bit. Let's Turn over and see uh, see if the teams change positions here. Trying to see who caused that fumble. Maybe we got a good replay of it here. Looks like 30. 30 caused the fumble. 33 caused the fumble. Which there that it would is. be Anderson. Yeah, Anderson caused the fumble. And Colton Tosh getting in there first to try to wrap him up, and Anderson causing the fumble once again. That's the second time today he's forced to fumble. I think it was Dawson that recovered it. All those guys have made plays on offense. Anderson, Tosh, Dawson, and uh, now they're making plays on defense. And, you know, now all of a sudden you start looking at things. Hazen with the ball up 32. Touchdown here, and the sportsmanship rule is into effect. And we have a running clock for the rest of the game. And that stat I gave you earlier, that Hazen has won 10 of their 12 games by 40 points. You start looking at this thing, they're up 30. Two right now, they score a touchdown and they, you know, two point conversion. They're up 40 points again. Right. This Hazen team has been absolutely incredible this entire season. Wonder if we might see a good, strong dose of Braylon Anderson here. It's going to be Tosh this time. Tosh has room, gets around another defender, and he has one man to beat at midfield. Cuts back to the middle, back to the right side again. Stays on his feet, zigzag, and finally down at the four-yard line. And I think that Tosh just ran out of gas. <laughs> 
Tosh with 38 and 46. That's 84 yards on that play. I tell you what, he had some blockers. He had a convoy. And uh, I, I think you're right. I think he, got, I think he just got worn out. That's a long way to run and a long time to be running. And uh, he gets to about midfield, and I thought, he's got it. He's got a blocker in head of him. This guy's going to cut back and keep that defender, and that's a great cut back there. Not sure why he turned it back the other way. If he'd have kept going across the field, I think he had it, but he may have just – he may not have enough legs. He's like, I can't run any further. I just got to make this as simple as possible. That'll, that'll wear you what down in the preseason drill, those zigzag <laughs> drills. that wear you down. You're running straight ahead. You don't use as much energy. You had to use the energy to make those cuts. Great run. You're going to have to call a timeout. Man, so many times this happens. You see this in college football, NFL, high school. You have a long run like that. Did I do my math right? Did, how long was that? Yeah, 84 yards. That's what they gave him. That's a long way for those linemen. That's a long way for everybody else. you got to get down the field. Yes. And, and once the ball's down, the referee gets down there, they start the play clock. Well, everybody else, and then you got people celebrating. They're high-fiving. Here we go. Well, by the time you get down there, then you turn around, look at the coach, you get the play, you break the huddle, or you everybody gets in their spot, and you look up, and the play clock's at two. You're like, wait, that's one of those cases where those uh, I think those officials need to give them a little <laughs> extra four or five seconds to get all the way down the field. Well, you know, too, even even at that, I, I mentioned might get a healthy dose of Braylon Anderson. We may just get a healthy dose of, of Colt Tosh running the ball. And we saw it there with that 80-plus yard carry right then. He was in the backfield ready to go again. I think the timeout, everything you mentioned, that also gives Tosh a chance to get his win, too, because uh, they may want to put the ball in his hands as they try to bring it in. Well, you notice, I noticed Tosh and King were talking about when they were lining up. Like, Tosh was pointing to King, and King wasn't under center, or not behind the center. Like, he was behind the guard, he was pointing, and they were shifting each other. No, King was like, no, you come over here. <laughs> and so there was some confusion there, and then the play clock, and it was just, that was a smart by Coach Masenka just to take the time out. Let's get this all situated. King in the backfield, and the direct snap is to Tosh. Cuts back to the left, stays on his feet. He'll lean forward and be down inside the one. And, you know, looking at that, too, I thought, ah, King's a little bit uh, too far to the right there. He wasn't the intended <laughs> person to get it. Direct snap to Tosh again. Leaps up and over. He's in for the score. Lost the ball momentarily, but he was in for the score before that happens. Hazen, 44 points on the board. And Tosh with his second touchdown carry of the day. You see the coaches over on the uh, sideline for Hazen? They're winding their arms. <laughs> Wind that clock. Run that clock. Coaches know when that sportsmanship rule goes to effect, nobody's coming back from that. It's, uh, this game is over, and now we can run that clock and we can start celebrating a state championship here in, uh, here in the next probably 30 minutes. Hazen will have something to add to their trophy case that they've never had before. King in to try to make it that 40-point differential. And... It's by himself, four receivers to the right, throwing back to the left, and a little bit too deep is, wow. Be careful <laughs> over there, guys. Yeah. Slick up that ramp. Phoenix Irvin was uh, about to depart War Memorial. Back into play now. It's still a 38-point advantage, though. And so the Bison with a steep mountain to climb. One yard touchdown run by Colton Tosh and Tosh with five carries today for 106 yards, two touchdowns. But of that 106, 84 came in one carry. And all of a sudden you got Anderson with three touchdowns. Tosh has a couple of touchdowns. You got Schlinker with a couple of touchdowns. Schlinker, three catches, three catches, 102 yards, two touchdowns. You, you, you're getting to the conversation here soon of uh, who's going to be the MVP. Seven carries, seven catches, seven tackles. Oh, two forced fumbles. I'm getting stats from the stat guy <laughs> of how incredible the game he's got. So, yeah, we're going to get to all those for you here in a few minutes. But it has uh, been an impressive game and performance by three or four of these Hornets. Well, you look at what Carlisle has done, too. I mean, the Bison have put up 348 yards of total offense today. It's it's not been 
that the Bison have not been effective on offense. It's the turnovers. Four turnovers have resulted in 24 points on the board for the Hornets. And Hayes goes really nowhere there. May make it out to the 15 or 16. We'll see where they spot it. Possibly the 16. It's funny, every year we do these previews uh, on TV or radio or whatever for the state championship games. We interview the coaches uh, before the game, during the week, and we ask them about what are, you know, some of the keys. Every year, every coach says turnovers. You cannot win a state championship game by turning over the ball. It's just, it's not going, it's very rare. Heck, it's just rare in a regular game. If you lose the turnover battle, you're going to lose the game more times than not. But then when you amplify it in, in such a big key situation like a state championship game where the momentum swings are magnified, where a turnover just seems like the end of the world in a game like this, it's hard to overcome. And uh, that you've seen that with Carlisle today. They haven't been able to overcome it. No, they have not. And they, they are running out of time in this one, too plus to go here in the third quarter and they trail by 38. There's two receivers out to the right and one to the left. It's man in motion. That's Cooney and Jones is going to throw. Catch is made. First down and more. Ball is knocked out, but it was after the receiver was out of bounds. Notice that clock is running even though uh, he ran out of bounds there, picked up the first down. They moved the chains, but that doesn't matter now. And the clock will just continue to run. It will stop uh, at the end of the quarter. And then when we come back after that first play, that, that clock will run. And uh, it won't be long uh, before we're out of here. And this game is over because it is uh, 30. Eight points. What an impressive run for uh, Hazen. After, I mean, it was a, you think about it, they went back and forth, you know, one, each team scored in one, what was it, one play? One yes. place. And it was a neck and neck game, six to six. And now it's 44 to six, so 38 straight points by Hazen. Quick catch out by Hayes. By the way, one one thing that uh, we really haven't talked about too much in, in this one is the turnaround that Carlisle's had this season. A huge turnaround going from one win last year to 11 and one coming into this game. I mean, it, it's obviously the biggest one in the state, uh, probably one of the biggest ones in the country. Yeah, one and 10 last season and uh, 11 and one this year. Gonna finish 11 and two, but the two losses were to the best team in the state. You know, I mean, that's the unfortunate thing about it. Uh, any other year, probably Carlisle's the best team in the state and wins the state championship. It just so happens to be that, you know, the team that's beat them twice is the team that's gonna win it on. It's the team right down the, you know, the street from you. And that makes it a little harder pill to swallow for Car Carlisle. Uh, but this is a very, very good Hazen team. I, I, I know I've, I've just been preaching about it all day long that they've got 10 wins over 40 points. That's incredible it to is. me. The closest game they played all year was against Carlisle, and it was 38 to 30 in week 10. But every other game this year has been uh, just about 40 points or more. They played a, a close one with McCrory early in the season. Besides that, everything's been a blowout. Here's uh, some stats for you. Braylon Anderson, six carries, 134 yards, three touchdowns. That's an average of 22 yards per carry. On defense, Braylon Anderson has seven tackles. Six of those were solo. Two tackles for a loss, and he's forced two fumbles. So a heck of a game for Braylon Anderson. I guess that's going to be my vote. You can put it down for MVP right there. <laughs> and he was the guy. You know, when we started this out, uh, what time was that? Two hours and 12 minutes ago, we yeah. started this show out, this game out, by talking about our key players to watch. Braylon Anderson mm -hmm. was one of those. And then he's got 27, or he had 27 touchdowns on the year coming into this game. And he's only added to that uh, by three today. Now he has 30 touchdowns on the year. He's the guy to me. I know Luke King is a heck of a player, and that's the quarterback, and he's playing defense too and linebacker. But Braylon Anderson, He's the fastest guy on this field, and he has shown it several times. Third quarter is now in the books. It's a 38-point advantage. Talking about these Hornets, we'll talk about them more. Fourth quarter on the way. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. 
At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. Since 2010, the rates of mental health issues such as anxiety, depression, burnout, and suicide have skyrocketed among American farmers. The growing season will follow six Arkansas farmers through a year on their land, and hopefully will provide some insight along the way. I'm your host, Ben Dickey of Arkansas PBS. Join us on the growing season. Look for new episodes on the second Friday of each month, available wherever you get your podcasts. It doesn't look like this right now with hazing up 38 points, but at one point Carlisle was in it and had tied the score, a 46-yard touchdown pass from Jones to Hayes there, and Carlisle had locked this up at six apiece. After that, though, all hazing all the time, 25-yard touchdown pass to Schlenker there just inside the pylon gets the score, and then a nine-yard rush from Braylon Anderson. We've been talking about him all afternoon long on both sides of the ball. And then, just when you think Carlisle's getting things going on the offense, tip drill, four purple jerseys in the area. Dawson is there with the catch, returns it 41 yards nearly for the score. And Hazen was able to punch it in after that as Tosh with a four-yard run and an 84-yard run after that, another touchdown score. And that's how we got to this point. Fourth quarter getting underway here as Carlisle trying to... Uh, Look respectable here in the in the fourth and a flag. We haven't seen that Not too many, often no. today. We'll stop play. The very well played game, clean. Uh, not a whole lot of uh, laundry on the turf. It has been uh, pretty crisp. Well, lots of folks to be excited, specifically on one side over the other. But uh, we'll look down to Tyler and and uh, talk to a couple of fans here who are probably excited right now. Yeah, guys, this one, of course, with it being a Friday kickoff at noon, there was maybe some worry that people wouldn't make the trip. Absolutely no worries. And on the Hazen side of things, they didn't just shut down the high school. They shut down the entire school district so everyone could make the trip from all levels. And now they are feeling it. They're ready to see Hazen take home the first state title in school history. And yeah, with that running clock, we're probably about 11 minutes away from that happening. And you know, these guys and everyone in the stadium are just going to erupt when that clock hits triple zeros. Thank you, Tyler. As Carlisle still trying to make something happen here. I want to go back to Carlisle for just a moment, Wes, and, and, and consider something here too. Uh, there are 10 seniors on this Carlisle team. And there were three that graduated last year from, from last year's one win team. You mentioned one and 10. 10 seniors on this team. So many players have come back. And that was something that, that Coach Shock said. That we talked about things in January and said, look, there are a lot of us coming back. We, we're the ones who are going to be here. We have to make some adjustments. And they did just that. They, they made many adjustments. They worked on discipline in so many areas. Uh, we have to look to ourselves to fix things up. And, and they did. He said, even down to the way you clean the locker room, it's the little things that make the changes. And that's what takes you from a one-win team into a state championship game. Yeah, to me, it's the, the excuses stop here. You know, the excuse isn't, well, we only had three seniors. The excuse isn't, well, we were young. The excuse is you weren't good enough, and it starts with you. You're coming back. Do something about it. You can't just expect to be better next year because you're returning a bunch of players. We see it, heck, all the time in college. Just because you're returning a bunch of players doesn't mean you're going to be better. You may be returning a bunch of bad players. You know? <laughs> I mean, we've seen that before, and I think – I think that's what coach was trying to say. Let's don't make excuses about last year. Let's do something about it. You know what? Carlisle did. They're here. Unfortunately, it's one game short. It'll be Bison fourth down when we come back. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. 
Since 1999, we've been with you every step of the way. From your first savings account, to graduation, to your first home. Centennial Bank is here to walk with you into the future. Though we've grown, Arkansas is still our home. We're still local bankers invested in our communities, here to help you however we can. Thank you for being a part of our journey. We'll be here when you need us. Centennial Bank, member FDIC. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service, real people. Fourth down now for the Bison. Trying to keep the ball in their possession here in the fourth quarter. Trailing big time here in the state championship game. And Jones will keep it and not get anywhere near enough. It's going to be turned over on downs as the Bison have just had a rough day. Well, it's unfortunate, but uh, I was checking there on that series. I never saw Jason Sullivan in the game. Remember the possession before he took a shot to the knee and uh, was uh, trying to uh, gingerly walk it off. And he was kind of used as a decoy on the plate where they fumbled, and I didn't see him in on that series. I hope everything's okay, but, I mean, he's your bell cow, and when you don't have him out there, it just shows you how much he means to the team. I mean, he ran for 2,700 yards. It was over almost 210 a game, 44 touchdowns. You know, he only had one fumble all year, and uh, he fumbled earlier in this game. That's incredible to me, and I meant to talk about that. For a guy who touched the ball that many times this season to only have one fumble, uh, that just shows you the, the quality of coaching and then what they tried to do uh, and what they instilled on this team to take care of the football, and they had. Carlisle this year was a plus 16 in the turnover battle. They had created 24 turnovers and only turned it over eight times all year. And they got how many today? Three? Is Four. that right? Four turnovers now? They've got half as many turnovers today than they had coming into this game. Yeah. And it's and it has proved to be the difference in this one so far as uh, incomplete pass on first down. Three receivers to the left of King and he's going to look and find Tosh. Reception made, first down gained, and he's covered up by six or seven white jerseys there. And for Tosh, uh, he's been running the ball. This time he picks up a reception. Numbers on Sullivan to this point in this game, 27 carries, 157 yards, no touchdowns. And, and going back to something we talked about with Sullivan, the touchdowns, I'm really glad for him that he had the record coming in. Mm -hmm. you, you would have thought, surely he's going to pick up one, two, three touchdowns in this game. He hasn't had one yet, and, it, and if we've seen him for the last time today, he will depart with the record in touchdowns for the season. Good thing they went back and checked and uh, made yeah, sure the, that everything was uh, absolutely correct. Yes. Yeah. A little surprised to see Hazen throw it on three straight downs here. With the, the running clock, you're up 38. Uh, I thought they may uh, hand it off a couple of times, let Anderson carry it a couple of times and, and get out of here. Not that I'm trying to suggest that they're running things up because they can hand it off to Anderson. Right. He could take it for a score. Well, he's uh, shown on, that. Yeah, any play. <laughs> I, I just, it caught me, I guess, a little off guard. They've thrown it three straight plays instead of uh, handing it off. Anderson doesn't go anywhere on that one. Third and about six on the way. The clock continues to run here as Hazen looking to pick up its first state championship in football. I think I may have found me a new drink uh, during halftime. <laughs> I was going to uh, ask you about that. Yeah, I uh, was... Uh, I was I love a little ice cream during uh, halftime, and I was going to make me an ice cream float. And they didn't have any Dr. Pepper, and, and they had some root beer. And I was like, man, I really need some caffeine. You know, this is going to be a long day. I mean, this is just the first of two games for us here at War Memorial Stadium. And uh, they're like, well, try some Mountain Dew with it. I'm like, Mountain Dew and ice cream? Nah, I don't think so. And one of the guys said, no, it's really good. Have you ever tried it? And I said, no, I. I I've never tried it. Let me try it. You know, I'm not going to turn my nose up to something I've never tried. You know, if you say it's good, I'll give it a try. 
So I did. And I made me a Mountain Dew ice cream float. It was good. I tell you what, it was it was really good. That won't be the last Mountain Dew ice cream float I'll have this weekend. Nothing like a little sugar and a uh, little caffeine in that Mountain Dew to get y'all jacked up for the second half, you know? Well, Anderson's down. He, he may, uh, they've got him over to the sideline now. Looked like it may have been a cramp there. Uh, they're going to work on him. But, uh, yeah, he, he may need he may need one of those. Getting a good we, long we all, we shot all may of need one here. of those. Anderson is uh, going to take a seat favoring left leg. He's had a fantastic afternoon. He's going to walk gingerly backwards over to the bench now. And so uh, they're going to tend to him. Fortunately for the Hornets right now, they, they don't need his services right now that badly up 38 points as the clock continues to run here. Now this is a chance to get everybody in the game and have a little fun, celebrate. King pass was incomplete, trying to uh, connect with his receiver on the far side of the field in, uh, excuse me, in Rodriguez. Let's see, they're getting some uh, players into the game, giving them an opportunity. That's why, look, I'm not opposed to throwing it around a little bit. Uh, we, th That's a memory. You know, if he makes that catch, that's something he can talk about forever. And he wants to have a catch, a chance to score a touchdown, to get in the stat book. So these, these some of these guys who've uh, practiced a lot all year and haven't gotten to play as much or hadn't had their name called or number called, this is their chance. Let them have some fun, too. King scrambling, throws, and it looked like the ball may have been tipped. It falls incomplete. And a little ways to go before the ball gets to the end zone again. Third down, upcoming. Look, and that defense still has an opportunity to stop them, too. You know, and right there, Carlisle, with that ball fluttering in the air, that defender saw that. I mean, He's, he's two yards, three yards away from catching that, picking it off, and taking it back the other way, too. He so you still just keep playing. It. He yeah. can still sense it. There was an opportunity there. So King with three receivers to his to the wide side of the field. And in the shotgun. Could be an offside. They're not going to throw the flag. King is going to be wrapped up in the backfield and dropped for a sack. Yeah, I'm not sure why they didn't throw a flag. I'm really surprised by that. I thought they would whistle it dead. I mean, unless he was lined up so far off the ball that when he jumped, he didn't even make it to the neutral zone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. You, you see that from time to time, but I thought for sure he was offsides, and I was looking for the flag and couldn't find it, and sure enough, they never threw it. Fourth and long here. Got to get down to the eight-yard line to pick up a first down. King, he's going to keep it, go nowhere. He was tackled from behind. The defense got around and came back in, and he was able to uh, go forward a little bit, but not far enough in on the tackle is uh, Luke Petrus as well as Ben Smith. Clock's going to stop as the teams change, offensive and defensive possession here. Download your photos from the game to remember this championship season. Go to myarpbs.org slash photos. We got our MVP totals. Braylon Anderson is your MVP. This is we kind of guessed. And there's a pick for Hazen, an interception. Yeah, Cam Johnson coming away with the pick, and it was in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. Johnson able to come away with it there on first down, and Jones throws the pick there. It was, it was just unfortunate, and, and uh, for the Bison, too, I mean, Cooney, I think it uh, injured a little bit on the play, had it in and out of his hands and just fell in the hands of Cam Johnson. Just took it away from him. Uh, back to Braylon Anderson. He is your two-way MVP. Seven carries, 134 yards, three touchdowns on the afternoon. That's an average of 19 yards per carry. He also had one catch for 12 yards, so total offense for Braylon Anderson, 146 yards today. On defense, seven tackles. Six of those tackles were solo. Two tackles for a loss, and he forced two fumbles. So Braylon Anderson getting it done on offense and on defense. He is your 2A championship MVP. There just really isn't much that he did not do today. King, handoff inside Rodriguez on the carry that time for the Hornets, and he'll pick up three. 
Clock continues to tick. Three minutes, 40 seconds for Hazen. The uh, Gatorade watch will begin. Nobody over there yet, just letting y'all know. I'll, I'll keep an eye on the Gatorade. They are they're starting to hug a little bit over there on the sideline, but nobody is at the bucket yet. Rodriguez on the other side of King now moves from left to right. He'll set up as a blocker. King looking to his left, picked off and taken to the uh, the 40 yard line and Preston Parker who has uh, been admirable on defense all day long finally comes away with a pick Tyler there's a lot going on down there interception just now the sidelines are still buzzing here for Hazen the Hornets are just a few minutes away from winning their first ever state championship in school history it could be a big day for Hornets inside War Memorial of course coming up tonight at 6 30 it'll be the Bryant Hornets going for their fifth straight state championship they're taking on Bentonville that game of course right back here on Arkansas PBS so we could see two Hornets take home state titles today well, we're, we're looking at one that's going to uh, come away with one, a big win on the way for Hazen, but one more opportunity for this Bison offense. And Sullivan is back in the game. He picks up, uh, well, nothing actually. He may have lost half a yard in the process. It's great to see him back in there. And you want to send him out the right way. I know the, the scoreboard's not the right way, but I hate to see him uh, sitting on the bench and and watching as this game finishes up. I want to I want to see him run the ball and ideally have a big a big play before he gets out of here. Well, the ball is on the turf and I don't know that he's going to get that opportunity. Ivan Rodriguez on the fumble recovery and it is likely this will wrap things up for the Hazen Hornets who are looking to take back to Hazen the big trophy, the state championship. Honestly, that just that kind of sums it up right there. Just it just did not click for Carlisle today. There was just something. It just sometimes just not your day. And uh, today wasn't their day, but some uncharacteristic things. Uh, Carlisle hasn't turned the ball over all season. They uh, had eight turnovers coming into this game. Eight turnovers in 12 games. That's like one every what four games. One every two three games. Uh, and today for them to have this is their fifth turnover of the game. And it was just uh, on a simple handoff. And uh, just, just one of those things that you can't predict. You never know when it's going to happen. But today, a team that doesn't turn it over, turned it over. You know, and you look back to the very first turnover of the game, that was a Hazen turnover. Yeah. Got the opening kickoff, took it down the field, turned it over inside the red zone. And you think, wow, this is, this is an opportunity for Carlisle here. And uh, Carlisle moved the ball down the field, but couldn't make anything happen and right after that once Hazen got the ball back one play bam the Hornets were on the board and really haven't let up much since that point somebody needs to talk to these guys over here on the Hazen side here we go now they're getting to the Gatorade I was about to say we're getting too close y'all need to get over there and get the Gatorade ready we're taking knees out there in the middle of the field and our camera crew's ready we got uh, two players over there getting the Gatorade uh, they're going to create a diversion with coach Basankin well, yeah. they, they had to find the, the Gatorade container that had the most in it. That's what they were looking <laughs> for. They were they were varying degrees of Gatorade in there. Clock at a minute now and continues to tick here. And the Hornet faithful are celebrating now and rightfully so. All right, here they come. They, they got it now. Someone's got to distract coach so that he doesn't turn around and look. But Colin Lee's got it. Shelton Kitchens. You see the team kind of walling up over here. King takes the knee. That'll be the last time he has to do that. Here they come. They're sneaking up on him. He's got his back turning. Got him. <laughs> Clock is still ticking here. It's not to zeros yet. It doesn't matter. Celebration has begun. And lots of folks in purple and white celebrating here a state championship, the first football state championship for the Hazen Hornets. And uh, they go out in the way that they played all year long. 44 to six is the final here from War Memorial Stadium. We're gonna take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk about these trophies and talk to the winning coach and MVP in just a moment. You're watching Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. 
Hi, I'm Susie Everett, wishing you and your family a Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday Season. With our busy lives today, we often forget the greatest gift of Christmas. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. I hope all of us will take the time and share the love of Christ this season. May your holidays be filled with joy and blessings. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from all of us at Everett. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Local broadcast of Arkansas PBS programming is made possible in part by Community Bakery. Scratch-made breads, pastries, cakes, treats, and locally roasted coffees served daily at two locations in Little Rock, 1200 Main and 270 Shackleford. The Hornets, Class 2A, state champions in 2022. Coach Bazankin there celebrating with his team. He's a little bit wetter than he was maybe uh, about 15 minutes ago. <laughs> Got the Gatorade bath there. A little cool outside. I'm sure he'll want to dry off eventually, but right now he's just going to soak it in and just enjoy the victory today. Well, it's a huge day for Hayes, and it was a huge year. This is a team that went undefeated in two-way, dominating mo most of their opponents. Uh, they played McCrory close. They played Carlisle close in their first meeting. Uh, but besides that, they were blowing teams out. And today, it got out of hand in the second half, and they end up winning by 38 points. And Hazen's first title in school history is one that they will never forget. They're going to be talking about this one for a long, long time. Oh, there's no doubt. And Luke King and, and Jason Anderson, the whole the whole gang, they all performed today and performed quite well. Two A state champions there, and a 38 point victory is just as you mentioned. It's indicative not only of the the season, but the, their run through the playoffs, all four games. Braylon Anderson. Finished with 134 yards rushing. Colton Tosh also over the 100-yard mark. He finished with 106 yards rushing and two touchdowns. And Justin Schlinker, how about that? Three catches, 102 yards. He had some big plays, and as you see it adding up there uh, in the uh, passing yardage for Hayes, and they had 208 yards passing, and Schlinker had uh, almost half of them. Look at the total yardage, though. I mean, it's what's on the scoreboard is what counts, though. But the teams played fairly evenly. It's the turnovers that that is the difference in this game. Carlisle getting more first downs, uh, close uh, in in total yardage, at time possession. All Carlisle, it seems, but uh, the Hornets didn't need any time at all, really, to to score. They scored when they got the ball. First play three times. One play drives or how long? <laughs> Five seconds. Ten yes. seconds. Yeah, not very long. So they probably had three possessions under 30 seconds if you think about it yes. three one play drives and so that's a very misleading stat and what we need is the uh turnover stat and that was the glaring difference in this game uh carlisle turning the ball over and hazen had the late interception for their second turnover of the game but i think it was it ended up six to two I believe is that so, what yeah. it was six to two for the day uh total number of turn yep six to two so uh and, and you think about this hazen had the first turnover of the game Right. And then Carlisle turns it over, what, six straight times six straight before times that interception that. to even things out. That, uh, that, or not even it out, but to close things out. The state runner up trophy being presented. Carlisle Bison, they do have a few of those. They'll add one more to the trophy case. But a fantastic year. I don't think enough can be said about a, a one win team turning around. But a team that's 13 and 0 had something to say today here at War Memorial. They're state champions. And those those are numbers that are going to be hard. I mean, you know, this you, you mentioned this is going to be a team that's talked about for years to come. But but what team follows this, even if there is a state championship team in the future, it's going to be tough to meet the to match the numbers that this team has put up. Well, I still think it's incredible when you think 20 players on the team. They had 20 kids on the team for most of the season. They brought up some of the freshmen that added to the numbers, but they played the season with 20 players. Last year, they had 14 kids. We called them the Fantastic 14. You know, Hazen had a good, very good team last year, and a lot of these kids were juniors, and uh, they only had 14 players at the end of the season and making a playoff run. 
Well, most of those guys are back, and this year getting it done with 20 and to do what they did, uh, and it just talk, it really shows you the commitment to the weight room, uh, to being in shape, because they're going both ways. I mean, so many times that we're calling these offensive linemen or defense as the defensive linemen or linebackers. Or Anderson's a great example, running the ball, then turning around and playing linebacker, causing fumbles. And, and King, the quarterback, playing linebacker also. They were in fantastic shape. They were prepared to make a run like this with a small team, and it all pays off with a title on a Friday afternoon in Little Rock. <laughs> Braylon Anderson, you saw his numbers right there. Two forced fumbles to go with all of those offensive numbers. And, of course, the Hayes and Hornets state champions posing out at midfield for the picture. Uh, we'll get a chance to, to visit with a couple of folks down there on the field here in just a moment. But uh, uh, lots more games on the way here from War Memorial. And we know there's even one more tonight. But uh, celebration beginning now on the Hazen side. Uh, the sideline, the fans getting involved as well. They're stoked. Hey, look at Coach Basakin. He's the one leading the way with the, <laughs> the trophy and holding it up and team following him around. That is a uh, – it's, it's, it's great for Hazen. You know he's enjoying the moment too. It's it's tough for these coaches. Uh, they, they can't get too far ahead of themselves, even going to a state championship game. Even if you feel like your team is on a roll and has a good chance to do something, you, you've got to – Keep uh, keep everyone focused on one more game. No, that's a great point because they were the team to beat. And, you know, we said it earlier. They were pretty much number one in the 2A rankings all of the year for, for the vast majority of the season. So every time they played someone, there was a bullseye. They were the team to beat mm -hmm. because they were number one. And to keep focus, uh, to stay together, and to accomplish your goal, that says a lot about Coach Basankin and that team right there. Well, and one thing for Hazen, too, and we've talked about this, of course, he gets the win over the rival, but no more uh, is uh, are the Hazen Hornets going to be looked at as Ofer in the championship game. I know we're going to get a chance to, to visit with Coach Besenkin here in just a moment, so we will uh, we'll throw it down to Tyler right now. Tyler, talk with the winning coach, please. Yeah, Coach, we just saw you grab the trophy and run over to the stands. Beyond just you and the players, what does this mean to Hazen? Oh, it's awesome. You know, they've waited – you know, since the history of the school for something that's to happen. You know, we've had some individual state champions, but never a team accomplishment. It's just awesome. You know, they're going to celebrate this for a long time. You can stand here, you hear the whole crowd, the whole town cheering. I mean, just take me through those emotions that clock hit zeros and you got that Gatorade. Uh, you know, it's like it's like the word. It just comes off your shoulders, you know. The stress level's like really high, and then once it's over with, it's this bang. And, you know, it's just awesome. I'm so excited for these kids, excited for this town. You know, like I said, they've waited a long time for something like this to happen. For it to, to do it with this team, this senior class, I mean, just what have these players meant to you? Oh, it mean a lot, man. They work their tails off. They understand what's expected out of them. They're, they're leaders, you know, on the field, in the weight room, in the classroom. They do everything that we ask them to do. Thanks so much, Coach. Congratulations. Coach Pasenkin and the Hazen Hornets now 13-0 and on the year and, of course, state champions. There's a lot of hardware out there on the field as well. Those folks are carrying around some, uh, some trophies and individual honors as too. There's another game coming up, Wes, uh, a little bit later on today. Well, one Hornet has taken home a trophy. Well, the other Hornets take home a trophy. The Bryant Hornets will host the Bittenville Tigers, the uh, 7A state title game. Bryant looking for a fifth straight state championship that has never been done in arkansas in the playoff uh, era of, of uh, high school football to win five straight years and uh Bryant has been dominant in the process of doing it i'll tell you what this bittenville team is they have a big offensive line and a good defense it's going to be fun tonight should be a fun one again tune in for that one in the meantime hazen state champions for the first time in school history a fantastic afternoon the hornets have have looked good here congratulations again to the bison on a fantastic season they finish at 11 and 2 great turnaround they make it to the state championship game but it was hazen today the victors and they do it in big time fashion 44 to 6 the final score again we talked about the, the state championship game coming up tonight but this one's in the books hazen 44 carlisle 6 for tyler cass and Wes Moore. i'm joey mcwilliams thanks for watching you've been watching the centennial bank state football championships on arkansas pbs sports good afternoon god bless you